Hello fellow survivors and welcome to another walkthrough, this time of the very popular challenge Hopeless Rescue. This challenge is probably the one that people play the most for speedrunning purposes, but it's not necessarily the most popular for a regular playthrough, which we're going to do today. And we're going to use the term walkthrough in the strictest sense, because we're going to walk quite a lot, especially in the beginning, and then we're going to start running later. Now, Hopeless Rescue is a great challenge. It's not particularly hard, but there are two reasons why I think a lot of people find this a bit daunting. The first reason is that this is the only challenge in the game to be timed. You only have seven days to actually do it. So if you take too long, the challenge will just automatically fail. Do You do, technically speaking, have a timer in Escape the Dark Walker as well, because if you just hang out, eventually you will die from fog and or the Dark Walker. But it's not quite the same. Here you have an actual timer that takes you seven days to do. Now the thing is, it's perfectly possible to do it under seven days without stressing about it. Uh, speed runs are done in like half a day, so 12 to 15 hours. Uh, and in a casual playthrough, which we're going to do today, and we'll probably do it in just a few days. And generally speaking, you should only really sleep before massive climbs. So you might want to sleep in Pleasant Valley or mountaineer's hut and then maybe one more time before the climb and then maybe once after that uh, you don't really need to rush it so that's one of the reasons i think people find this a bit scary is that they have this timing aspect to it the other aspect is that i don't think everyone feel, feels comfortable uh, knowing how to get up to the summit now, of course i play this game a lot and i could get up there blindfolded but if you are not that uh, experienced with especially Tim Wolf Mountain as a region it might be a little bit intimidating to get up to the summit and don't worry we're going to do all of those things today and I'm going to walk you through it as well so let's get to the challenge <laughs> Now before we start, I just thought I'd briefly explain how this works in terms of pathing and where you're supposed to go. So when you spawn, you spawn in Mystery Lake in Trapper's Cabin, which is roughly over here. And you need to get to the summit, which is over here on Timberwolf's Mountain, to get the Distress Pistol. And then you need to fire the Distress Pistol down here in the Lighthouse and Desolation Point. Now in the past there was actually a bug where the stress pistol spawned in the plane crash over here and it was possible to go there, pick it up and then just leave Team of Mountain altogether. But that has been patched a long time ago, so that's not going to work. The way this works is that you really just need to stay alive from wolves and weather and the, the, the challenge is kind of like a voyage-ish uh, difficulty, so it's not too hard. So the way this works in terms of your route is that you spawn in Trapper's Cabin and then uh, you can head straight to Pleasant Valley, but if you want to play it safe, which I suppose we could do, you can head to the camp office first, and then you head to the dam, and then you loot the dam. And then you go through the dam and get to Pleasant Valley. And what you can do in Pleasant Valley is, I highly recommend looting the Signal Hill uh, radio tower, which is like around here somewhere. And then you head to the farm, and you loot that as well. From there, after you can rest in one of these two places, probably, uh, or if you've got energy and time, you can keep going. And then you get to head up to the uh, rope to Timwolf Mountain. You can loot the plane crash if you want to, and head to the rope to Timwolf Mountain, which is over here. And then once you're there, you go to the Mountaineer's Hut, which is over here. And then the more challenging part of this aspect all this journey begins where you have to get up to the summit and there's several routes up there but they all kind of end up the same place and we're going to walk you through that and there'll be no problem at all uh, i'll take it slow but effectively you kind of go around like this and the massive loop and then you end up like kind of like this uh, there's different routes though we're actually going to take a route that goes like more like this and then you get the flare pistol and once you have that well then it's just about getting home really so then you uh, you can head back the way uh, you go, but I'm going to show you a shortcut that is a very common place. Usually when I do walkthroughs, I don't use shortcuts because I want to do it sort of vanilla style. But this one is so common and so easy to do. We're going to do a shortcut from the mountain down to Tim Wolf Mountain uh, Hut. And then after we've done that, uh, we are leaving Tim Wolf Mountain. And then we're going to take this route along the roads of 
Pleasant Valley, enter the mines, come out uh, by the Cinder Hills Mine and Northern Coastal Highway. And from here, it just depends, you know, if you're tired, you can always sleep in the mines or in the lookout tower that's over here. Uh, it doesn't really matter. And then you just head down, follow the road through this, through Crumbling Highway and into the lighthouse and then you fire it. And as I always say in challenges, don't worry too much about what you uh, have in terms of loot and condition, because what matters at the end of the day is that you are alive to finish the challenge and what you do in between isn't really that important because you're gonna lose all your loot and all your health and everything anyway when you finish. So it doesn't really make a difference what you do uh, in between as long as you are alive. But I would recommend you probably rest at least once before you get to Tim Wolf Mountain and probably once after just to not rush it. Uh, you don't want to really go out at night, which you sometimes see experienced people do or, or speedrunners do. And of course, since it's only really this route that's in question, you can ignore Bleak Inlet, Full on Muskeg, Broken Railroad, Mountain Town, and Hushter Valley completely, as well as Black Rock, which is on this map here. So you don't really need to think about those at all. So I'm going to take this route today and we're going to get up to Tim Wolf Mountain and then we're going to get back home. I'm going to take it fairly slow and I'll explain everything I'm doing along the way as well. So let's get back into the game. So let's hop into Hopeless Rescue and then you have male, female. We'll take female and we'll call it Light the Beacons. And let's hop in. So we're going to spawn here in uh, in the Trapper's Cabin, and the loot you get here in Trapper's Cabin is somewhat random. Uh, you can actually restart the challenge if you want specific loot. So for example, uh, sometimes there'll be coffee spawning right here, so if you really want that, just exit and then restart until you get it. Uh, you can also find a revolver laying on the, on the table here, which also we did not get, and sometimes you have a rifle spawning here. So if you would really like to have those things, if you'd like to have a rifle or a revolver or something, you could just exit uh, and then go back in. We're not going to do that though, we're going to take it random. As you can see, it's noon and we the timer is counting down, but don't worry about it. This effectively means you can sleep like six times or so, uh, maybe even seven, and you don't really need to sleep that much. You can actually do this in one go if you want to. You just need to utilize your stims. Now, um, I would recommend, generally speaking, that uh, throughout this uh, challenge, you check all the first aid kits that you come across, because on challenges and on this kind of difficulty, you can get things like energy drinks or stims uh, randomly in these things. Uh, it's all RNG. So here we go on. So this is completely uh, random, but um, they can be very handy, especially in the rope climbs. So you, if you check all the first aid kits, you know, here, camp office, the dam, and so on, you'll probably find at least a couple of these along the way, and they can be very handy. Painkillers could be good, good as well, I suppose. So let's just uh, take our time a bit now, and we'll loot this uh, trapper's cabin, and then we'll head out of here. We've got some revolver this ammunition. In handy. Uh, this is locked, unfortunately. Uh, I don't think we really need wood, but we can take it anyway. We will take cartridge, sewing kit, a lot of the stuff we're not going to be needing, but we'll take all of it anyway. Uh, I'm going to take this pot, and I'm not going to take this smaller one. I'm take this wood. We have storm lantern, which is great, and anymore. it's almost full. That could be handy. We'll take the book, just for having an ease of uh, access to fire, so things uh, burn faster. The book is the, is the best way to start a fire. It's heavy. But it's the best, uh, most successful way for a fire to start. Antibiotics, probably won't be needing that. Nothing there. Looks like Food, this has been we don't need that. We'll take this energy bar, but we don't need snares. You're not going to do any hunting in this chance at all. Even if you wanted to, you don't really have the time to do that sort of stuff. Even though you, you could, of course. All right, we don't need tools either. Uh, flare, we'll take that. Matches, food, accelerant could be useful. Uh, we got a can opener, so this yeah, we'll handy. take that because then we can open these without losing calories. If you open these without a can opener or a knife or a hatchet, you smash it open and you don't get the full calories. Uh, I don't think we'll be needing this, but we can take it anyway. And then that's it, except for this. Uh, let me also quickly check Tinder. We have only two Tinders, but that's okay. We're not going to be doing a lot of fire in this challenge. 
So we're going to open this safe though, because safes, I, I wouldn't go out of your way to open safes in this challenge because of the timing issue, but there's at least two safes you can open. This one and the one in the dam. And if you're lucky, you'll find a stim or a mackinac jacket or air muffs or something. So I would recommend opening it. So let's just do that now. Okay, that was a short one. It was like four or something. Three, okay. And about 41 or something like that. So let's go back. Three. And 42, I think that was. 342. I always do it fast about half the time and then I go slower after that because now we're getting near the last solution. Let's see, and let's see what we got inside. We have Take a flare it. shell, which isn't useful now, but when we get the stress pistol, we can use it. We got, oh, good boots, we can take those. And we go, oh, wow, look at this. We got the Expedition Parker. <laughs> Isn't that nice? So we put that on. We'll put these on too, they're definitely better. Drop that, and now we're nice and warm. We don't have a hat though, but we can get a hat easy. So there we go, that was uh, pretty good. Nice, so now we can just head out. We don't, oh, we have two of these, we don't need that. Let's drop one of these antiseptics, okay. Uh, we don't have any weapons, and this flare shell uh, can come in handy because when you get the stress pistol, it's important to remember that you only need one flare shell to finish this challenge, which is the one you light at the end. So you can freely use the other ones to fight off wolves or bears. So let's head out and let's take this the safe route. Uh, when I play this challenge, I often do it kind of like a speedy way. We're going to take the safe route and we're going to go via the camp office. As you can see, it's a nice clear day. And we don't really need to uh, really hurry or anything because it's they're actually warm, especially because we found that exp expedition park. Though. So that was a bit lucky. But very often in the safe, you'll find something like a Mackinac jacket or wool mittens. So uh, those two finds are quite uh, good. But the RNG is often somewhat balanced. So if you find an expedition park in there, you won't find a revolver or a rifle or something like that. If you are very cold, you can just start running to get there faster, you know, and then you just sleep. The only issue with running all the time is you're gonna you're gonna wear your character out quite quickly, and you're gonna have to sleep more often. In the beginning, though, this first day, uh, it's okay if you run a little bit because you want to get uh, you want to be relatively tired when you get to nightfall. Uh, uh, so therefore, you um, it doesn't really matter if you run a little bit, so that when it becomes dark, you are actually tired and you can sleep until the morning. So it's okay to run a little bit, especially in the beginning here. But then after that, I would uh, I would just mostly walk. So now we're heading towards the camp office, and we're taking a more or less straight route here. Um, not necessarily the fastest route. I'm just more or less just heading there. Mystery Lake is one of those areas that I think most people are very familiar with. Uh, people who don't necessarily play interloper or are sort of hardcore veterans in this tend to nevertheless know regions such as Mystery Lake, uh, Mountain Town and Coastal Highway really well. So uh, even though I went a little bit off track there on, on a hill and so on, I assume you all know exactly where I am. But we're heading towards the camp office now. Let's just check it quickly. I'll take this, but I don't think I'll need it. And wood is this kind of thing that you can just dump. Um, in the beginning, especially in a challenge like this, it's okay to loot everything. And you'll see that I also loot more or less everything. And the main reason for doing that is mostly to just get good clothing, uh, as well as things like coffee, uh, maybe weapons, uh, that sort of thing. <clears throat> so, uh, it's okay to loot everything, but once you get to the summit and you have the distress pistol, there isn't really that much point in looting anything else because you just need to get out of there from that point onwards. And uh, it's it's very easy once you have the distress pistol to to finish the rest of the challenge. Even if you are exhausted and need to sleep, if you only have one day left, you'll still make it. You can easily get from the summit to desolation point in like six in-game hours or something like that. So here we are at the tracks. By the way, the weather is always the same. 
that is the same when the challenge starts the weather will always be like this it will be sunny and clear or at least i've never seen it anything different so the beginning of the challenge is always nice clear and sunny uh, as as the challenge progresses though the weather can change randomly so yeah you can walk into a blizzard you could have uh, you know not clear days it, it will vary okay <clears throat> so here we are in the camp office this stuff isn't necessary but seeing as it is right there we might as well check just to see if there's some good clothing or coffee or maybe weapons or something to make this a little bit easier even though we don't need any of these things to complete the challenge we can also get a hat let's take antibiotics so let's look around here uh, there's also a first aid kit in it. We got a light shell. Oh, this stuff will come I don't in handy. think we'll be needing that. Uh, lantern fuel could be good for fire. We don't need the whetstone. That's not going to be used. And then we'll check. Uh, we'll check these drawers quick. No. Right, let's check in here. See if we got the stem or something. No. Nope, we got an energy bar. Gonna leave some stuff. We don't need all that stuff. Uh, I'm not going to loot these drawers because it's going to be miscellaneous loot that we don't really need. Uh, this could be handy, but I don't think we'll be needing it. I can pick it up, but I'll probably dump it soon. Bandage could be handy. This candy bar can be handy. And I think that's about it here. And then we'll check upstairs as well. And... Let's check these drawers too. Hope nobody ah, needs baseball this cap and socks. Nice. Let's put those on in a second. And we'll check here too. And we can also see if the mag lens is here, which it's not. And here's the bedroll. Well, we already have a bedroll. We spawn with the bedroll, so you don't need this bedroll at all. All right, let me just do a quick sit with her. We found some uh, hat, so we'll put that on. We found some socks, so we'll put that on. I think this shell is slightly better, even if it is heavier, so we'll put that on. Look at that, stylish. Let me also have a quick look at my inventory. I'm gonna carry this, but this is going to be dumped soon. Uh, a lot of stuff here is stuff we don't really need, and I wouldn't really bother repairing things either, uh, unless you have time and it's very cold. So we're gonna head out of here. Let me see, I didn't miss a weapon, did I? No. <coughs> let's head out of here and we'll go the straightest route there's two two routes towards um the uh the dam both of which have a first aid kit you can go this way via the um the ice which you'll run into at least one wolf doing it or we can go this way through the derailment i'm going to go through this way but you can choose whichever route you prefer you can also go over this uh, mountain here and go up to Lake Overlook Cave and then go over that way and then you won't have to run into any wolves at all. So there's many routes that it doesn't really matter what route you take as long as you get to the dam. And it's still nice and clear so you've got the time. One thing I'm going to check though is I want to see if there is a stone I can pick up because then it can be free from wolves. Let's see, is there a stone somewhere? If not, we will find one. You know, stones are all over the place until you need them, then they're nowhere. But there usually are some stones here, and they're the, these rocks here. Yeah, very often near rocks you'll find some stones. And I can see one here, actually. Let's go grab that. You just need one. Uh, you can have more than one if you want to. But. So the, what we want the stone for is to scare off wolves. So if you're watching this and you uh, are not that familiar with the wolf tactics, the way it works is that when you have wolves on you, you can light a flare or a torch if you have a torch. The lantern doesn't work, but a flare will work as well as a torch. You light it and then uh, when you have it, you equip the, the, the stone. And while this is burning, you then aim at the wolf and it will cause the wolf to flee. And I'll show you how that works if you run into a wolf. At the moment I only have flares, but if I make a fire I'll grab some torches too. And we might as well check here. If we're lucky there'll be a revolver here, which will be even easier to get rid of wolves. Even though we don't need it, but it makes things easier. And there's also a first aid kit that we can check. Let's just see here. And 
There is a cleaning kit we don't need. Gloves and a flare. Nice. Oh, a hat. Very nice. Okay. Oh, and some miscellaneous stuff. Let's put that on there, and that on there, and that on there. Look at that. Okay. Then we're going to check here. I'm actually going to pick up a couple more stones because we can also use them to distract. And here's a first aid kit along with two flares. So we are very well equipped with uh, light and all of the turns. No stim. But now we have five flares. So that's why this route is preferable because you always find those flares in the railman. Now let's be careful with wolves here. And we can just really go straight ahead now to the dam. Uh, there is a wolf over there, so I might as well show you how this works if you're not familiar with it. So you can, we can just go, go this way now if you want to, to be safe. You can just go that way and head down to the river and then you go to the dam from there. But just so I can showcase how this works with wolves, if you're not familiar with how to do this, I'll show you how to get rid of them now. So these wolves are, so are soon going to um, become aggressive towards me once they get closer. But with the flare and the stone, they are no problem at all. So I'll show you how this works. Uh, they haven't seen me yet, so I can actually get quite close. But uh, <laughs> yeah, they actually got kind of like the backs to me. I'm going to light it now because I'm quite close to them. And soon one of them will um, spot me. This one did, but he got scared. And then these ones have not spotted me yet. There we are. So they barked and spotted me. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a stone from my radial menu and then aim it at the wolf. And then this will happen. He ran, he ran away. He got scared. So the way this works is that if you aim at a wolf uh, with any kind of weapon, including stones, the wolf will trigger a charge, so it will start attacking you. So once I aim at this wolf, it will start charging me, like this. But then, because the f <laughs> scary I know, but because this flare is on the ground, the wolf gets afraid and he runs away. So you don't have to worry about them at all, you don't need the weapons, there he is again. I'm going to use the hotkey this time, which is 2 on the uh, on the keyboard. I aim at him, he starts running, and because the flare is burning, he'll get afraid, and he runs away. And off he goes. <coughs> Basically, the way it works is that once you aim at the wolf, it triggers a uh, an attack. But because they are afraid of fire, uh, it's as if they spot the fire, and then they run away. The same thing will work if you have a uh, marine flare or if you have a, a torch, uh, or a campfire. But it won't work with the lantern. Okay. I will throw this away once I enter the dam, because it's very noisy, this, uh, the flares. The flares are very strong though. I do recommend always carrying one on you, if you can, because the flares are wind resistant, while the, to uh, the torches are. So we're here, we are by the dam. We're now going to go through the dam. We're not going to loot the entire dam, because I don't really see the point in being that thorough and doing that much. But we are going to loot a few things. If you want, though, you definitely have the time to loot the entire dam if you would like to. Before we go into the dam, though, there's one area here I'd like to check, and that's this trail over here, where there is a first aid kit. Just to see if there's a steam or, or energy drink or something like that. I'm going to keep this on me for a minute, because there is sometimes a wolf here by the dam. But as you can see, the wolves are no issue at all. As long as you have a light source like a flare or a torch, as well as a stone, then you can just scare them off. If for some reason you don't have a stone, by the way, and you have no weapons to speak of, you can also wait for the wolf to get close enough, and then you throw the flare at it. And that will also work. But uh, the Failsafe is the, uh, the stone. So let's go and check in here. Uh, let me see if there's any clothing on the beds, which there isn't. We'll take this dog food though. And we can check this while we're at it. Alright, and we'll also take these. I might as well check this too. But what I really came in here, oh, that's nice. Uh, that's going to be better than this for sure. Let's go dump this. Nice. 
Uh, this is what I came in for, just to see what there is. Disinfectant, we don't need that. Bandage could be handy, just for sprains. All right, now we're gonna enter the dam. Uh, so let's do that. <coughs> Sometimes there's a wolf here, but as you can see, the wolves are no problem. And also on this particular difficulty, uh, on this challenge, it takes a long time for the wolves to actually spot you. You can get really close to them without having to worry. I'm gonna get rid of this flare because the flares are noisy. I don't know if we need light in here, but if we do want light, we have this lantern instead. And in here in the dam, there's a lot of stuff to loot. There's a lot of things to find, but we don't really need to loot all of it and spend the time to get everything in here. But we will check a couple things. So let's do this first. And then here's a bunch of stuff. Here's even more. We don't really need that anymore. While I'm here, I'll open this stuff. Um, yeah, chocolate. Oh, have cool. Here? Uh, any of these unlocked? These can be good, so we'll open these. All right. Then what I want to do, uh, I want to see how much water I have, and I actually don't have any water at all out of these drinks. And I could make a fire to make water, but I'm at, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to take the water from the toilets. Yummy. And then I have my hydration cupboard. I'm going to take that, I'm going to take this, this one too, and now I have close to two liters of it plus some drinks. So water is no longer an issue. So that's done. Uh, I might as well check these things while I'm here. One of these should be locked. Yeah, we don't have a pry bar. If I find one, I might as well take one. But we're going to check over here quickly. For some of us, there is a pry bar here. There's also a cartridge I I which we can take. This. And gauntlets, we'll take those. They are better than these. So, no, actually, they're barely better because they are so bad condition. So I think I won't actually take them there. And we'll take this accelerant here. We'll check this. And I suppose we can check these. We don't really need to check these, but we can. Oh, hacksaw. Uh, we'll take it. I don't know if we'll be needing it because on the summit, um, we don't need to open any of the containers on the summit. So that's one thing I should mention actually. On the summit itself, there are these containers and you need a hacksaw to open those containers. But there's two things to note. One is that on any difficulty in the game, including challenges, uh, and survival, there will always be a hacksaw at the summit, so you don't need to bring one. Except if you play an interloper uh, or acid at sleep, if you're playing that, then you're not guaranteed that. So on this challenge, if you do want the opening containers, there'll always be a hacksaw up there. And the other thing is you don't actually need to open the containers at the summit, so it's not really necessary. Okay, there's two things I want to check here. We're not going to go upstairs and loot that area, but we're going to check this area here, because sometimes there's a stim here. Uh, no steam today. There is a pry bar though. Oh, we can take that. Handy. Uh, these water tablets I don't think we'll be needing. I'm going to check over here quick also where there is a ski jacket. There's very often some good clothing here. I'm going to take that and replace that. And I think we'll leave the rest. If you want to, you can loot all of these things and you'll find random stuff in there. Most likely papers, drinks, coffee maybe if you're lucky. Now we're going to go in here, and we're going to look at this area too. It has another first aid kit right here. And there can also be a stim in here. Oh, we found oh, a stim this in anymore. this, so that's good. That's a fact we don't need that. And I think I saw a stim. Yep, there it is, another stim. So these are handy. Good for sprinting and climbing ropes. We'll take those. And then there is a rifle round. We'll just take that in case we use it. And it seems to be a fire striker, which we probably so won't be needing, but I guess we can take it. And then here's the safe. Oh, it's a flare also. And this safe I would open as well. If you're lucky, you'll get like earmuffs or something in there. So let's see. That was like seven or something. Kind of low numbers today. So six, okay. Six. And looks like 56. 58, okay. Six, 58. Let's see what this last one is. See what we got. We got flare, uh, revolver ammo, and that's it. So that wasn't particularly good. Oh, well, what are you gonna do? Let's continue. I'm gonna 
go up here. There can also be a stim uh, down here in the lower levels, but that stim usually is not there if you found the stim uh, in the room I was just in. But I can show you where it is anyway. So here we are in the engine room, I guess this is. If you need to make fire, you can make a fire here in this barrel and make water or torches or whatever you want. And then we are going to go here. And the way out is over there. But just to show you, we're going to go up here. And there's a couple things to open here as well. I didn't open all the, um, the lockers because there's nothing I really need from the lockers. It would be a few bits of clothing and that's about it. So there's nothing I really need there. I suppose we could open this though as it's right in front of me. I think I no, I don't need this. that. Well, if you go up here, uh, if you didn't find the stim inside this room here, like on this shelf where we just were at, uh, very often, not always, but very often there'll be a stim here. Uh, on the ground next to this corpse. So it's worth coming up here just for that. There we got Ridge, we got Hatchet, which we'll Thank take you. because if you end up in a struggle, we can use the Hatchet. The Hatchet is the best weapon against uh, wolves, by the way, if you didn't know that. Uh, so in a struggle with a wolf, the best uh, weapon is always the Hatchet. A lot of people think that the Hammer is the best because the Hammer doesn't kill the wolf, but it gets it. Uh, off you faster but uh, all the tests I have seen uh, always show the same thing which is a hatchet is the best and so also some food here in this corner and then we're going to go down boom boom but yeah if you look at how much damage is taken during a struggle uh, compared to each uh, weapon the hatchet always takes the least damage meaning that is the best weapon so I would always recommend using the hatchet against the wolf. Alright, then we're at the dam, the lower dam rather, and then there is the old broken arrow. Where's that? But it's here. <laughs> it's like stuck in the door. And here we have our, our friend who has died. And then we go down here. And in here you can check a couple things. Sometimes it's matches on the lower left here, but we don't really need it. Yeah, there's the matches. Well, this stuff will come in we'll handy. take it, I guess. We can check this too. Metal, we don't need that. And then we want to check this. So we look at the big coffee in there, which there isn't. This background's extremely rare. We can open these, seeing as we're here already. And I guess we can take that. We don't need snow pants, so that's good. <coughs> Let's open this. Hope nobody right needs this anymore. Oh, syrup. Oh, that in park. <laughs> okay. Now we're getting a bit heavy, so let's sort ourselves out. So we'll put those on. Uh, I don't think this this is actually warmer. Yeah, so I'll take that then. And get rid of this. Uh, I want to get rid of some stuff because now I have very heavy things. I'm going to refuel this, and I'm going to let's see. We got so many flares. Let's drop one of these. Um, we can drop these. We can drop, we don't need two of these, they don't really weigh anything though. We don't need these. And I, we don't need this fur if I was too heavy. And we don't need this because we have so many matches. So let's we'll drop that, now we're a bit lighter. We get rid of some other stuff too, but later. Let's douse this and let's head out of here. Now we're gonna come out in Winding River and we're just gonna head straight through here. There's a couple things you can loot if you like, like this box. We're not gonna come. Handy. We're not gonna come back here because uh, we're gonna go th through the lighthouse a different way. And as you can see, I'm actually warm, even though it's windy and it's cold. But because I found the parker, I found this, I found that, I found these and these. I'm very warm already, uh, so we're doing really well. The parker was a bit lucky to find the safe, but. If you go the route I've been doing now, and you check the safe and trappers, you check camp office, you check the dam, you can always loot the entire dam if you want, check all the drawers, all the lockers. Uh, by the time you get here, you may not have the exact same loot I have now, but you're probably going to have very, very good loot. Uh, and you're not going to really struggle with cold at all. So you'll be fine. Let's head down to the dam here, to the dam, to the river. Uh, there is a shortcut you can use here if you don't want to face this wolf. If you want to, you can get do like this, and you just kind of like hug this wall here, and you get up like this. 
and now you're up here see and now you have a shortcut and you can then just go that way here and that's it looks like you call the rabbit <laughs> but let's say you can't get that to work or you're a bit you don't really like going out of bounds it's not really out of bounds it's just like a little shortcut but we can take the usual route which is down here and i don't have weapons but i have flares so i'm going to take that out in case the wolf gets too close there's usually one wolf here but there's also usually at least a couple rabbits so very often when you come to this area uh, the wolf will all the time kill a rabbit so the wolf is not really an issue uh, it doesn't take much for him to just start killing a rabbit instead so yeah and if he doesn't then you just use the old flare trick you know plus the stone and then you scare him away okay we're gonna head straight out of here because we don't really need any more loot um, in fact our loot is decent enough we don't even need to loot anything else I would say but we're still gonna go a few places if you want some more loot now what you can do is you can go in here over there is a little cave and you can find a, a few supplies there not a lot but a little bit <clears throat> we're gonna run a little bit so we can expend some energy before it gets dark so we're just gonna run to this cave there's no more walls to worry about now there won't be any walls here in the winding river at all and basically gonna run just to expend some energy and I basically want to get to single hill before it gets dark and if it is dark I'm gonna uh, sleep in the cave instead because when I play this myself uh, I don't mind going out at night but for you if you're doing this uh, or you're watching this because you want to complete this challenge it's best not to go out at night and uh, also during the daytime it's easier for you to see what I'm doing and where I am so we're just going to head through here and we're going to sleep the night away in probably single hill. <clears throat> Alright, so here is the cave leading out of single hill. So we're going to do that. Let's grab our... We could use a flare to lighten the load, but I'm going to use this just because I have it. And then we can light our way here in the cave and get through it. So let's head to Pleasant Valley. Alright, let's light our lantern. Yeah, okay. And you can see, if you want to see the time you have left, you can just click Tab if you're on the computer. I'm not sure what button is on consoles, but you can see how much time there is. Six days, 17 hours, 52 minutes. So we got bags of time still. Check this guy out if you want. In here in these mines, there's not much really to, uh, to loot. Uh, there's some bits and bobs, uh, corpse. And you might find a hat. It's actually one area where it's very likely you'll find a wool toque. Uh, and there's coal, of course. So if you're cold and you need some fire, then it's a good place to get some some coal. Alright, I'm gonna set straight through here into the atrium here. You can't really get lost and if you do just hug a wall and eventually you get here to this this atrium here. And there's a little bit of misclute and wood we don't really need. We can take this food though. Grab that. Check this out. Chips. No wool tube today. We have this instead which I don't think that's probably better than the one I have, most likely. Yeah, slightly better, so we'll take that. And then we're going to head out of here. There's no point really looting anything else. And then we'll go to Signal Hill. You don't, strictly speaking, need to go to Signal Hill because there's so much loot. But the reason I wanted to show you uh, that is that Signal Hill has very, very good loot. Uh, on any difficulty, even in Interloper you can find good loot there, but on challenges and on lower difficulties, Seal Hill is one of those underrated loot areas in the game where you can find a whole bunch of really good loot that will set you up for the rest of the run. So uh, we're going to do that and then you'll see what I mean once we get there. Even if there isn't anything we really need as such there, it'll be nice to have a little break there as well. So here we are, that's the way out. That is Pleasant Valley. And it's still light out, so we will make our way there. So here's uh, 
the way to Nuenau in the southern part of Pleasant Valley. If you head through here and all the way down this way, you'll get to the farmhouse. And if you want, you can just do that right away. Just head straight this way and down to the farm. Or straight this way also will take you straight to the farm via a slope. No problem. Be careful of this side here because there's a bear cave here. So if you're unlucky, there can be a bear that comes out right here. Uh, he can also patrol this side and he can be coming down this way. So be a little bit careful of that. And Signal Hill, where we're going, there's a road over here we'll take all the way up. And you can encounter a bear closer too, but we should be alright. If you have played Episode 3, then you'll recognize the area because you need to go to Signal Hill in Episode 3 to send a message. Or use the radio or whatever it is. And you go the same route as we're going to do now. <coughs> Let's just run a little bit to get to the road. Even though uh, we are very close, and we're going to get uh, heavy very soon. I haven't drunk or eaten anything yet, because I'm waiting until we get uh, Citrep to do that. So here we are at the road, and you can see the, the bridge there. Uh, this leads all the way to Thompson's Crossing, if you want to go that way. Uh, but this is the way we want to take, because this leads to the Signal Hill. You can of course go this way instead, kind of like off-road, uh, which is slightly faster. But I wouldn't worry too much about that now. We're taking the easiest route here. So this is a walkthrough and in my walkthroughs I want to make things as easy as possible for the viewer so that you are confident enough in doing this in a way that's familiar to you. There's no point in me doing a walkthrough if all I'm doing is some gigantic shortcuts and out of bounds and tricks and exploits and blah blah. It has to be something that you can replicate yourself. So we're going to do that and just follow this path here. So, this is the road to Signal Hill. As you can see, there's a wolf right in front of us. But as you'll remember, the wolf won't be an issue. I think he's actually got his back to us, but it doesn't make a difference. You can actually distract wolves with stones. So if you really want to get rid of this wolf, you can throw a stone kind of near the wolf and then make him go that way. So like this, and then he should go that way. See, there he goes. And then I can throw another one, make him continue to go that way. And you see, there he goes, and then off he goes. So you can do that too, you can distract the wolves. It works especially well on lower difficulties. If you play survival and you play on interloper, then it's not as uh, commonly used. Uh, the reason is that on interloper survival mode, the wolves can detect you from so far away that by the time you get close to the wolf, he'll usually have seen you already, uh, whether he's got his back to you or not. So the stones don't really play as much of a purpose. Although you can still do it in interloper, you just crouch and you know keep your distance and throw the stones. But on lower difficulties on challenges, the wolves, uh, they, they take uh, more effort to detect you. So they need to be much closer to actually spot you. So there it's good to just throw a stone. I do recommend throwing it like I did. Don't throw it like this and aim. Because if you do that, if the wolf turns around and then you do this, what's going to happen? That's right, it will trigger a charge. The wolf will attack you if that happens. Instead, you want to throw it just like this without aiming, right? But aim it somewhere where you want to go. I'm going to pick this up though, because remember, you should always have one stone on you to make sure it's easy to scare off the wolves. You don't need the stones. You can just use the flare or torch by itself and just throw it at the wolf, but in case you don't, uh, it's just easier with this uh, with the stone. So there we are, it's now getting dark, uh, it's good timing, it was a little bit of a night sky there, but it seemed to have gotten cloudy. Be a little bit careful here, because it can be a bear here. I'm just going to grab a couple stones. So maybe take a, take a second here, and then stop and listen. I can't hear any footsteps or grunting or anything, so there isn't a bear here. Because what can happen is that the bear, that is down in a bear cave down here, can walk all the way up here and kind of patrol around this area, which makes things a little bit complicated. And I'm going to show you a shortcut here after, so in the morning we're going to take a shortcut to the farm. Uh, because there's two shortcuts in this walkthrough I am going to use, just because they are so easy that uh, you don't have to worry about it. And you can use them in survival mode too. So here we are on Signal Hill, 
The single hill has great loot. We're gonna light our lantern and uh, we're gonna find quite a few good things in here, especially in this room on our right. But let's just look around. So here first we have a first aid kit. Let's grab that. And we found an energy bar. We'll open these as well to see what's inside. Yeah, look at that, air wrap. Uh, this we probably won't need, but we can take it. Uh, if I'm in a small area like this, very nice. I very often loot everything and then I'll sort out my inventory afterwards. Beans, we got, oh, look at that, we have a revolver. That makes things Jesus. even easier because we can use this as a deterrent now against wolves. We probably won't be using the rifle in this challenge at all, but I can still pick it up. If I happen to run out of uh, uh, lantern fuel, I can now pick this up instead. But I won't be needing it. And then we, I, can, I like looking between the, the corners and stuff. I have some of these things hidden there. And you can find a stim hidden here sometimes. Not today though. Uh, in here, I might as well, since there's not that many, we might as well open all these drawers and see if there's any food or something. Uh, yeah, and we do find some food. Yeah, we're very well stocked with food now, as you can see. Food shouldn't be an issue in this challenge at all, because you'll find so much of it. It's basically like playing on Voyage. We can also check here, sometimes, yep, there's some more ammunition. And then we can go in another flare, and also accelerant. And here, there's often very good loot too. So we got coffee, that could come in handy. Good for climbing, and that sort of stuff. Water, which we probably don't need, but we can take it. Matches, we don't need that either, we'll take it. Food, lots of food, including an MRE. Uh, Galen's milk, peaches. We found another expedition parker here, although it's very busted. Could maybe repair that. Nothing in there. Anything under here? Yes. We got a few things under the bed. Always check under the bed. We got snow pants. We got a stim. We got grape soda, cleaning kit. Uh, I'll also pick this up, I suppose, but. So it looks like we got socks here. I think I can use this. Let me check this out. Nothing wrong. Boots. We don't need that, I don't think. Revolver. Okay, so there's a few things we can do. Uh, let's just pick this up for the sake of it and we'll organize ourselves a little bit. Let's take this down. Ugh, my tongue feels like sandpaper. Let's eat something first. And I'm going to eat low condition items because if I get food poisoning, I'll just use the stuff that I picked up. So it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to eat some of this low condition stuff. Uh, I was filtering it by condition, really. I'm going to eat all of this. Eat this too. And there's also these beans which will open. We don't need to warm up, really. And we might as well have one of these drinks. These ones will not give us food poisoning regardless. So. Okay, good. So let's sort our inventory a little bit. So first thing is it's still... Uh, it's quite dark, but we might be able to repair something. First we'll put on this air wrap. It's very good. Let's have a look here. This is actually warmer, so we'll take that. And then here, uh, this is better. And here, I think this is better. Yep. Yeah, the snow pants are probably better. Yep. And we have wool socks, they are definitely better. These are not going to be better, so we drop those. Now, if possible, I wouldn't mind repairing this, but 45 minutes, yeah, we'll probably manage that before it's dark. Let's just do it and see if we can manage before it gets dark. I'm gonna need to rest soon. Oh, ah, I got too dark. Okay. What we're going to do then instead is we're going to just harvest a couple of these just to get a bit more cloth because I think I want to repair the parker in the morning because then it will be warm enough. Generally speaking, you don't need to repair anything in this challenge at all. But just to make things even easier and even safer, we might as well do it in the morning. The rest of the stuff I think we can just drop and drop. But if you do want to be completely safe and you know, have the best possible gear, you could, uh, in the morning when it's light, spend one day in just repairing all of this stuff. Because it's very good gear. You have two parkers, you have one of these. Uh, in a perfect world, we'd have two of these wool toques. And we'd have a cowage and sweater or fisherman sweater. We'd have wool mittens. We'd have another one of these and our wool long johns. We'd have climbing socks. And these are probably right, maybe two of these. So this is like very good gear, but not perfect. 
What we're gonna do now, we're gonna sleep. So let's have a drink. We can just find our water here and drink that. And then we're just going to sleep. And then we'll sort out the rest of our inventory in the morning. So let's sleep for, uh, I don't think we can sleep for 12 hours, but I'm gonna sleep for 12 anyway. And we'll probably wake up after 10 hours or so. There we are, we're fully rested. It is early morning. Uh, we might as well have a drink. I think we're going to eat this uh, milk, which will also do some hydration uh, for us. So let's eat that. It has lots of calories too. I might as well have one of these uh, sodas as well. And let's have some water for the rest. There we go. And then what I want to do is I want to actually repair this if I can, because this is the best item in the game in terms of clothing. You can't find this on Interloper, but on all other difficulties and challenges, you can find this. This is the best one. It's not the warmest one. You can get warmer than this. Bear coats are warmer than this. But um, it's very light by comparison. It weighs almost nothing. So in terms of like heat, weight ratio, it's the best item in the game, I'd say. So I'm going to just try and repair this a little bit just to make it easier for the rest of the journey, if you can manage. 70% chance of success. We failed twice. Let's try one more time. And then we don't have to loot anything at the summit either, probably. There we go. Look at that. Fully repaired. And now we are very warm. And we don't really need the rest of the stuff. We are a little bit heavy, though, so let's do a little bit of inventory and see if we can get rid of something. Uh, we don't need all of these matches and stuff, so we're going to get rid of one of these fire strikers. We don't need two of these, I don't think. Let's drop one. And we don't need these matches either, so I'm going to get rid of some of these matches as uh, painful as that can be. We don't need all of these either, six of them. I think two is enough, if that. Let's go through here. we got a bunch of stims and painkillers, which I think I want to keep. Yeah, we got some miscellaneous stuff. That's fine. Here we got a few things that are probably a bit heavy, like these things. Uh, this is actually very heavy for the amount of calories it gives. So I'm going to actually drop that. And then here, uh, I'm going to refill this lantern here. And then I'm going to drop this uh, this jerry can. It's too heavy. And then we have this. We can uh, repair this if we want to, but it's not really necessary. I don't think I'll be needing these ammunition, rifle ammunitions because we have the revolver now. So I'm going to drop these rifle ammunitions. Uh, we don't need four of these. We can have three. Uh, we can drop one of these. We can drop two of these. We can drop one of our sewing kits, and I guess that's about it over here. Yeah, we don't need all this, this cloth either, so let's get rid of most of that. And here we are, that's very good. Nice. And now we also have a revolver. This will make dealing with the wolves a lot easier, because now we can just scare off the wolves with the revolver. That's the main function of this weapon. It's not a hunting weapon. It works as hunt a hunting weapon, but it's not what it's for. And we'll deal with that once I encounter a wolf. So what we're going to do now, we're going to head to the farm. As you can see, we still have six days to do this. Uh, we'll probably be at it by the summit on day five or four. And we're taking our time here. As long as you have one day left when you are at the summit, you'll be fine. So let's head out of here. And I'm going to show you a shortcut now to get to the farm. As you can see, we've got a nice clear day. How nice. It's a little bit cold. That's just because it's early morning, early-ish morning. We are at minus one. And if you approach this um, this sort of edge here, you can see the farm. It will be right in front. There we are. So there's the farm. There's the barn over there. We can't really see it. Thompson's Crossing is over there. And uh, the plane crash is up here. And behind it, like roughly over there, is where the rope is to Timberwolf Mountain. You can kind of think of this mountain here. I pretend that that is the Timberwolf Mountain. Um, that's kind of like how you should look at it. So what we're going to do, we're going to head to this farm. And we might as well loot that. And then we'll head through the plane crash, which we don't need to loot, but we can check a couple things there. And then we'll head to Mount, uh, to Timberwolf Mountain. When we come out to Timberwolf Mountain, we're not going to go back the same route we came. We're going to go along this edge of Pleasant Valley, all along the edge, along this road that's there, and all the way up to over here, where there is a mine that goes through this mountain and ends up on Coastal Highway, which is behind this mountain here. So that's our route. Now to get to the farm, there's three different ways. You can find a rope if you're lucky, and you can just attach the rope here, and then you can climb down. 
Very easy. The other way is to go back the way we came, follow the road until you come out, kind of like over here to the slope, and you just go down the slope here and I'll go along the river and over here. So it's very, very easy. So I'm going to show you a shortcut. There's two shortcuts I'm going to show you in this uh, walkthrough, and one of them is how to get down here in a super easy way that is not difficult uh, at all and not scary. So let me show you what I mean. When you come out of this radio tower here, when you're standing here at this uh, this gate, it is extremely easy. And in fact, it's pretty much just walking in almost a straight line to the farm. And what you do is you just go out here and you just follow the slopes to the right here through these trees. Just walk down here. And just walk down here along this, this edge here, right? And then when you get here, and now you can go this way and continue along the path and down. What you want to do here is you want to go left. And you go down here, this little steep slope. And don't be afraid to get a sprain because you probably will get a sprain doing this. And then you get to this corner here. And now you can just get down here. It looks a bit scary, but it's actually super safe. Even if you fell down here, you wouldn't die. It's, it's not far enough for you to die. So you can just walk down here. Just walk very carefully. If you're playing controller or you're not uh, confident with your moving abilities, then just crouch. Just crouch and then you move down like this. Just move forward. So you know, all I'm doing now is I'm crouching and I'm moving forward. And that's all I'm doing. Crouching, moving forward. And as you can see, I don't even take any damage. No sprains either, but that's, that's just luck. And now I'm down here, down by the slope. And you can just head straight to the farm now, which is right there. So you see how easy that was? That's very, very easy. One thing though is to be careful that there is a bear cave right there. So there can be a bear patrolling over here. Right now it seems to be over there. Hello. If you don't want to do this though, what you can instead do is just hug the wall here until you get to here, and you can climb down this rope, rope. But again, you should be careful of the bear, or just walk down this slope here. Doesn't make a difference. But this shortcut I just did is just a very, very easy, very safe shortcut to do. I'm gonna do one more shortcut for you at uh, the summit, which is how to get down. And there's our sprain. <coughs> the sprain in this case affected our wrist, so we don't really need to fix it because uh, the revolver is a one-handed weapon. If I wanted to use the bow or the rifle, then I would need to fix it right away, but we don't really need to. I am, however, going to take a painkiller, and the reason I'm taking that is literally just for you, the viewer, because being in pain will obstruct the, um, uh, the, the view, the field of vision, and I would like you to see as much as possible. So now I'm gonna head straight to the barn, not barn, the farm, uh, if you want, you can go in here, but there's not really any point in doing it. And also here in the farm, there's a lot of stuff to loot, but we don't really need to loot everything because we already have everything we need. But there's a couple things that we want to check. Uh, first thing is that uh, there are two first aid kits in here. Uh, so we might find a stim or something. There's very often coffee in here. Not always, but you'll pretty much always find coffee in either the farm or single hill or both. So it's worth checking for that. <coughs> Depending on what your luck has been with clothing, um, if it hasn't been as lucky as mine and with the double parkas, for example, you'll find some good clothing in here too. You'll probably find like a ski jacket or marina's pea coat or something like that. So. It's definitely worth going through here, and after here there isn't really any major areas to loot, although we will check a couple other places too. Okay, I usually do this in a specific order, so I don't go through the main entrance. I start with the basement, just to get that out of the way. So we're gonna unequip this, we're gonna go down here, and into the basement. And we're gonna start digging here. Give me one second. All right, so let's check out the basement. We're going to start by opening the first aid kit. Well, this stuff will come in handy. Nothing there. And now if you want more clothing or more gear, you can go here and you'll find a few things. So there's like these matches are guaranteed. They're always there. We got some accelerant. We don't really need them anymore, but we got some gauntlets that could be good. We could have a look. Are they better than these? They are better, but they're also heavier. So I'm not sure if I actually want them. So I think I'm going to drop them. I think I'm only going to replace these if I find mittens instead. 
And we got a few lockers. We don't really need anything anymore, so we don't really need to check this. But we'll take this though. Looks like this has been here a while. Uh, some of this is a book here. There's tools. We don't need those either. But in survival, you need them. In here, you can find some more clothing in these uh, uh, the washer and dryer. Sometimes nothing today though. And then we'll head uh, upstairs. And again, like how much you need to loot this area depends on how well you're doing in the run so far. But there's a few things to look for. So we check down there, and then now we also want to check in you know, the kitchen. As you can see, we actually have coffee. And this could be handy. And in fact, one thing you might want to do, I suppose we could do it now just for the sake of it, is we'll pick up this pot and some other stuff. This and this. And what we'll do is we'll make a fire. Right. Uh, we'll use our accelerant because why not? And then what we'll do is we'll make a whole bunch of coffees because we'll make the rest of the run very uh, easy. So we'll place all of these things. I'm missing one, it seems. But what we can do is we can eat this, for example. And then we'll get another can because we have a can opener. Yummy dog food, and then we place this. And how much water? Yeah. And then we, what we can do? We can make a bunch of coffees. Okay. Just make a whole bunch of coffees. And what they will, what they're good for is that they regenerate some of your stamina. So the little eye symbol in the bottom left, it will uh, grow back by drinking coffee. So we can do that. And let that burn a little bit, and then we'll just have a little look around if there's anything else. More coffee, so we might as well make that. Maple. Uh, let's just loot all of this stuff. And then we got tea if you need that, but we don't need that. That's good. Drink. Oops. We're going to grab some more water from here. Two liters from the toilet. <laughs> And then we can check here in case there is a stim in there. This will come in handy. No stim today. There's probably not any other stuff. Now you can hear this is boiling already. Yeah. Well, three minutes, so might as well have a quick look around here. Very often there's a rifle around on here. We don't need that though. We're not going to use the rifle. Uh, Gloves, these could be better. Let's see. No, they're the same. Let's check the cabinet. Nothing there, really. We can take this. And I guess that's about it. Mag lens is here, which is great, but we don't really need it. We have a lot. So. Candy. Or granola, rather. And our coffee is ready, and we can take it. Grab, 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 grab. And we could just drink one as well. Just to recover a little bit of uh, stamina. And there you go. See, I got this like plus symbol now. We might as well cook some more coffee though. Why not? So let's just put some more on here. I think that's probably enough afterwards. There we go. And then we can loot the rest of the stuff. There we go. Fatigue reduced. And we can look around. Here's another first aid kit over here. Another coffee. Oh, nice. Be prepared for anything. Another coffee here. So we have a lot of coffees if we need that. Uh, no first aid kit today. Okay. Oh. And then we'll go upstairs. And very often here you'll find some good uh, clothing items. So here's a ski jacket, for example, which we don't need because we already have Expedition Parker. But if you didn't have that, this could come in handy. This wool scarf could come in handy. We can replace that, for example. And also check this. Oh, okay. Uh, the rest we don't really need. We're gonna go in here for the, in the toilet. Check this medicine shelf. Nothing there really. We'll take this toilet water. Check the bathtub. But sometimes there's uh, you know thermals in there. I'm going to check in here. The coffee's almost ready, it seems. I'll open this one up. Very often there's a uh, marina's oh, yeah. pea coat in here. Being uh, no, not today. Check the cabinet quick. Yeah, no, that's not easy. Uh, if you want the rifle, if you're on this room, check under the bed. Sometimes there's a rifle there. Not today, though. And I think that's it. There's nothing really in this room. We can check this, I suppose. 
Uh, no, we don't need that. Uh, we can grab this flare and this food. We don't really need anything else. So we're not gonna. You can check all these drawers if you like. There's a lot of little things I'm not looting, and I really the real reason I'm not doing it is because I I don't need it. How much water do I have? Quite a bit. Coffee is done. We'll grab these. And now I have a bunch of coffees, which will make the rest of this journey very easy. I have a bunch of drinks and food and everything too. How am I doing with these things? 64. Well, let's make three more to get rid of these ones. So 64 and 21. So let's just make these. And how's this doing? One minute. We'll put on this fair firewood here. And I'm also going to grab a torch, just to have it. But we don't really need it because we have a flare. Uh, I'm going to take for the rest of this journey these two and not take the cooking pots. And while that's cooking... Oh! Okay. That's... Uh, that's interesting. But uh, that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> Okay, that's uh, that's the ghost, the ghost of uh, Pleasant Valley Past here, sending us signs that coffee is important. See, the spirits of the long dark is telling us, bring coffee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take these, and let's do a little bit of inventory because we're a bit heavy. We have a lot of food, for example. So as you can see now, we have a bunch of stuff. Uh, I'm going to dump this. We don't need that. We have one tinned already. Uh, we have a bunch of stuff here. We can take those for sprains. This is fine. Here we have a bunch of stuff that's heavy. I'm not going to take these peaches because they are so heavy. They don't provide a lot of calories either. The rest of this thing I probably want to take. I might dump a couple of these drinks. And uh, I think that's about it of the food I want to get rid of. What about here? Here we have... Um, we have a lot of flares. We're not going to need this many flares. So I'm going to get rid of some of these. We'll take like three of flares. We don't need the hacks either, but I'll just carry it for the sake of it. And I guess that's it. Yeah, get rid of some stuff that way. Cool. And now what we can do is we can head out of here. And we can drink a coffee. So as a good example, if you see now on the bottom left, uh, or like rather I can point, if you look here now, you see that this bar here is just under this plus symbol here, so that's how much uh, stamina I, or I have left. However, uh, and I'm also getting this bonus, which is fatigue reduced, so when walking and, and running or climbing, I don't burn as much uh, stamina or fatigue. Technically, it's called fatigue, but I think it's stamina. But what we can do is, if I drink a coffee now, this bar will go up, so I can take a coffee and I can drink it. You can only drink it if you're not uh, full. So when I go back, you see this has grown. It used to be here, now it's here. So this is how you, you get back some energy or fatigue or stamina, whatever you want to call it. Which will be handy because we need to climb a bunch of ropes, right? So you might as well do that. And just because it's annoying, why don't we just get rid of this sprain as well. All right, so why don't we head now to Tim Wolf Mountain? That's the next place to go. So we'll, we'll do that now. Weather's still good. How oh, nice. Fatigue is reduced. Also very nice. So let's get out of here. <coughs> and this here is the orchard. There can be wolves here. If you do have wolves there, remember, you have your revolver. Or you can use your flare. And you'll be fine. And the easiest way now is to actually head down to the ice. So instead of heading forward here, you can do that, of course, if you want. Go this way. You can go whichever way you want. Easiest here is to go to the right. When you come out of the farm, head to the right. And what you want to do is head to the river that's over here. You'll see the river just here. And there you go. That's the river, see? And once you find the river, uh, you don't need to go anywhere else in Pleasant Valley. It's kind of pointless. You get to the river, and then you just follow the river this way. What we're going to do now, we're going to follow this river all the way till it splits into a fork, and then we're going to take the route up to the plane crash. If you have played episode 3, then you know exactly what I'm talking about, because that's the same route you have to take to get up to the plane to rescue survivors. 
that route actually didn't used to be there before. Uh, that was added with uh, episode 3. Before episode 3, you couldn't actually go up this way. You had to go via a rope climb, or you had to go around. But now we can take this uh, shorter route, which is much better. So yeah, so that's how this uh, works. And as you can see, we still have almost 6 whole days left. We are very well geared. As you can see, we're actually warm. We're not going to get cold at all. We have a lot of coffees. We're not going to get tired. We have a bunch of food. We have water. Uh, we have uh, weapons, including a revolver. But even if you didn't have a revolver, you have the flare and the stone. <coughs> so this is looking very good. So I wouldn't really worry that as long as you now keep the wolves at bay and you know where you're going, then this challenge will be very easy. But we're of course approaching what a lot of people dread, which is Tim Wolf Mountain itself. So we're going to get through that too. There's a couple of bears in your way as well, and you might want to uh, get rid of those. So we'll work on that too. One, uh, one argument for picking up a rifle, if you were to find a rifle, is to get rid of the bear. Because the revolver doesn't work very well against bears. It works great against wolves. It can also work against moose. Not so much against bears. There's a wolf over there, but he is too far away. He's not going to be an issue. So now when you come to this uh, fork in the ice, so we came from here. You can now go right, you can go left, or you can go straight. We want to go straight. So here's this like broken or like burnt down cabin or whatever. And some birch you can pick up if you want to make some more teas for warmth and health, but we don't need that. You want to just go straight through this cabin here and up this way, past this tree here. See this tree that's fallen down? You want to go to the left of that. If you go to the right of it down here, you get to a little cabin, which we don't need in this challenge. We're just going to go past this tree, past the brown, as it were, and head up here. <clears throat> and here we are. Once you go to this area, you go to the right, and you can see this little path up here. And this path will lead you all the way up to the plane crash. And if you still need clothing, if you're still at this point in the challenge, uh, need clothing, then you can loot this area too. So at this point in the game, you will have looted Trapper's Cabin, Camp Office, the Dam, Signal Hill, and the Farm. So you, by now you probably have really good loot. Maybe you don't necessarily have two expedition parkers, but you might have a Marina's pea coat, a ski jacket, a military coat, or something. Maybe you have combat pants instead of snow pants. Maybe you have wool long johns or better gloves or whatever. So even though I have two expedition parkers, it's perfectly possible that you have uh, in your run found different uh, items, but you are still likely to be warm at this point. You will have looted so many places that have uh, clothing that by now in the challenge, you should be warm. However, if for some reason you haven't found any good loot, if you're still cold or you've just been unlucky, then you can loot this plane crash up here as well. Because here, there's a bunch of clothing to be found. Uh, you can loot all the suitcases up here and you will find clothing in there. If we loot it now, we'll most likely find some better clothing for our layers, like our inner layers, like a fisherman sweater or, or wool long johns, but we don't really need to do it. So here we are at the plane crash. There's a cave here on the left if you want a little rest. There's a little bit of loot in there too, like for misc loot, some food and stuff. So if you want that, you can go and you can see there's a little bit of stuff. There seems to be some rifle ammo too. And we don't need that though. On the right there's usually a deer carcass. Yeah. And then we have the plane crash itself, which has a bunch of these suitcases thrown around. And very often there's a, there's a uh, um, corpse or two as well you can loot. So if you want to, you can take your time here and you can really loot all of this stuff. Well, wow, busy crows, eh? So many crows. There, there, there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
But yeah, you can also find more food here. You can find this like airliner food mm. if you want okay. to bring that. We don't really need this. We have so much food. I'm not going to take any more food at the moment because there's so much of it. You can go in here and you can loot these overhead lockers if you want to. Oh, mittens. Speaking of which, I'm going to take these mittens because they're actually better than these. And they're very light, so I'm going to take those. And then you have corpses you can loot. Um, and of course you have all these suitcases. And most of them will contain clothing. Or if not, they'll have something else. Oh, so here we go. Long johns, which was great. Jeans, we don't need that. Uh, this one, let's have a look at this one. Nothing there. What about this one? There we go. Nothing either. But we got these. Might as well put them on. But as you can see, you'll find some good clothing here, for sure. We're not going to loot all of this stuff, there's a lot of suitcases here, but if you need more clothing, just come here and loot the stuff. There's a bunch of clothing to be found, and a bunch of food as well. So if you aren't already set in terms of clothing, you will be after this. However, there's one more thing we're going to check. So, so you can see there's more food here, lots of drinks, there's so much to loot. But one thing we're going to do, we're going to check in here, because you can find a stim in here. So we're not going to loot all of these like food items. Oh, we can take one for good measure. The chicken, why not? Um, we're going to go in here. And by the way, if you didn't know already, you can also loot these things, the overhead lockers. These can also be looted. And you might find... Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> you can also loot these and you can find all sorts of random things in there sometimes. Sorry about that. Friendly fire. <coughs> okay. But what we came in here for is to go straight ahead. You want to cross this little segment here and go here. Because here you can find a few things. So here we have a stim. If this stim isn't here, then very often Nobody needs uh, you will instead find a, a gold drink there. Let's so take this. We got some ski gloves, which could be very good. They're not too heavy and they're very warm. But for us, we don't need them. And here's a book as well. So yeah, that's why you want to go here. And now when you want to get to Timbal's uh, mountain itself, there's two routes. One is to go back here and you just head up this way, right there. This little gap here between the plane and the mountain, go there. And you just head over this ridge and then you immediately head right and you'll get to the rope. Very easy. You can also go up here, but it's a bit tricky. The other route is, seeing as you're already here, it's quite easy. Uh, just go down here into the bottom of this plane then you, you can loot these suitcases if you want to then you open the door and then you're out here by Skeeter's Ridge uh, so here's a burnt cabin there and then on the right over here is Skeeter's Ridge where there's like a basement if you play the hunted that's where you start uh, be careful though there are wolves over here that can also patrol this area here so uh, you can be unlucky especially if you're smelly and a wolf is like around here but you got the revolver so once you come out, you go left and just walk past this uh, broken engine. And then you walk past this corner here and then you are almost there already. <coughs> it's quite easy to find. So I'm just going to do that. I haven't needed the revolver so far, but if you encounter a wolf, I'll show you how to use it. Although I think you probably know how to use it, but the way it works is that it's a deterrent. If, uh, remember that the revolver you can aim. But remember what happens when you aim? That's right, if a wolf has spotted you and you aim at the wolf, you'll trigger a charge. So what you want to do if the, uh, with the revolver, if a wolf is on you, is just shoot, boom, from the hip, like a hip fire shot, boom. If you do that, then the wolf will run away and be scared. Maybe we'll take two shots, but he will get scared. If you aim at it though, it'll, it'll trigger an attack. If you shoot then, uh, well, in my experience, if you shoot with a revolver after the wolf has started attacking you, you have roughly 50% chance of scaring the wolf away. Uh, unless you hit the wolf, then very often they'll always run away. <clears throat> so here we have, you can actually see the rope. I don't know if you noticed it, but there was this uh, red line you can see. Uh, there it is. See that? That's the rope out of Pleasant Valley and into Tim Wolf Mountain. That's where we want to go. So you can go this way if you like, just over this hill. But just to make things easy as usual, we'll follow the the normal route, the, the road, so to speak. And that's just over here and then to the left. And many of the routes I'm taking in this challenge is just like the, let's call them the plain or vanilla routes. 
just so I can show you where to go and not confuse you. I don't really see the point of a walkthrough if we're going to make it fancy because then uh, if you're watching this and you're not that familiar with the region uh, it's hard to remember oh what was the hill that he crossed over there was like a hill or whatever and like, it's, you know, let's make it as easy as we can right and some of you watching this might be more experienced and you already know all this stuff but hopefully uh, you're more watching maybe to learn how to do this rather than where to go so here we are at the rope at Timor Mountain if you want there's a couple of things you can do here before you grab the rope so for example in here and be careful by the way it can be wolves to patrol this area here just so you know that uh, here there's usually some misglute wood containers backpacks that sort of stuff and also one thing to point out in this area here we have the out toilet there's wood some there's a pry bar in here too and then in this area we have the only guaranteed prepper cache in the game that's there for all challenges and on survival including loper which is when you face this rope here instead of going up it you go to the left and up this log here and then you can see that there is a prepper cache a bunker here now on survival modes on lower difficulties that is to say stalker and below you can also find random ones of these like food and weapons cache around there'll be one in pleasant valley and one in uh, Mystery Lake in like sort of semi-random locations. Um, but on Interloper they don't spawn. But this one will always spawn because this is the same as a building. It's not a chance thing. Uh, on challenges, by the way, I don't know if you can find the cache, like the food cache and stuff. I don't think you can. I think they've been turned off, but I'm not sure. But I don't think we really need them anyway. Another reason I want to point this out is due to a practicality. This is going to sound a bit strange, but from this point onwards, when you leave this area, theoretically, you can go from this point in the game all the way up to the summit without your game saving. Because your game saves when you enter a building or a loading screen. And if you climb up this rope, you can go to Timwolf Mountain, uh, like the mountainous hut, and you can sleep there, for example. But if you don't, if you go past the mountainous hut and all the way up to the summit, uh, unless you take the cave route, which we'll probably do, you can get all the way up to the summit without ever entering a new area, which means the game never saves. So if you suddenly realize, let's say you start climbing from here and you get halfway up the summit and suddenly you realize, oh, I gotta go, I have an appointment, or I, I gotta go, or whatever, and then you exit, then the last save point will be, in this case, the farm all the way back there, which is really far, so you have to do all of that again. So one thing you can do is, just to make it a little bit easier, is to just enter this area. And at the very least, your game has saved here. So if you had to quit the game for some reason, then at least you can come back here. I hope that makes sense, and if you understood the point of that. Basically, I'm trying to save you time in case you had to stop playing. Now you can loot all these lockers if you want to. We don't really need anything, so there isn't really anything for us to loot. I'm just doing spot looting here. <coughs> And we got a gold drink, how nice. Some water, you can take that I guess. And here's uh, one of the few uh, vents you can open in the game, which is this one. Uh, some of those bullets in there. We have a lantern if you didn't have one already. So very handy. We'll come back here possibly to sleep afterwards. And if you want, you can check for a revolver. Sometimes there's a revolver hidden behind here. So be sure to check if you don't have one already. But that's about it, we don't really need anything else. And then we're going to go outside and do the climb up. And we're also going to get rid of some stuff because they're a little bit too heavy. We can't climb with it too heavy. As you can see, I have too much stuff. And again, as usual, we don't really need most of this stuff. If I click now, it won't allow me to climb. So we're going to get rid of some stuff. One thing we can do is just eat stuff. I'm going to sort things by weight. This is quite heavy. I'm going to eat that probably. Uh, I think actually I'll eat. Yeah, let's eat that. So you can finish it. Yeah, and then I'm gonna have a coffee to regain some energy. And also let's dump something. We got too much stuff. Uh, let's get rid of uh, some food. Uh, we don't need the MRE, I don't think, but I'm gonna get rid of the airline food. I'm gonna get rid of these uh, pork and beans, I think. No, actually I'm gonna get rid of some of these drinks. And I don't think we need three liters. We'll just get rid of one liter. It's now a bit lighter, so that's good. There we go. So now we'll climb the rope. If you are tired, if you get to this point and you're very tired, if you found a 
go drink, you can drink that, or you can use a stim and climb instead. So we're gonna go hard, straight up here. Let's go. Tim Wolf Mountain, we go. And as you can see, it's starting to get dark. <coughs> so an idea is to actually sleep in the mountain is hot. Uh, that's really up to you from this point onwards where you want to sleep. And if so, then you might as well sprint a little bit to get there faster. And then after the mountain is hot, I don't think you need to sleep again for the summit because uh, for one thing, you have coffees and stims. So you don't really need to sleep anywhere else. You can sleep before the rope climbs if you want to, but it's not necessary because by now, if you have done the route I have, you should have at least two stims. I have five because I found, I think, three by random, but you should, if you went the route I I done, you should find at least two stims. There should be one in, um, in the dam and probably in Signal Hill or something like that. So you'd have at least two. So if you go to Mount Ness Hut and then you sleep, if you then start your journey towards the summit, then what's going to happen is that you can climb one or two ropes before getting too tired. And then you can just use the stem in the last rope and then you're fine. And there isn't, there's no real issue. If you have no stims for some reason, maybe you just somehow didn't find a single stim or you used it, then it's fine. It doesn't change anything. Then what you can do now is you go to Mountaineer's Hut, you sleep there until you've fully recovered your energy, and then you start the journey to the Timberwolf Mountain Summit. And what you can do is you can sleep in some of the caves. There's one cave I'm going to show you especially after the second rope because you need to climb three ropes from now to get to the summit. Three ropes. And you should be able to climb at least two of them uh, with just your regular energy after sleeping. But the third one, maybe, maybe not, depending on if you have coffee or whatever. But if you have no coffee, no stims, no energy drink, nothing, you can sleep in this cave I'll show you. And then you can recover some energy and you can climb some more. We're going to sleep here in the mountainous hut and then begin our journey in the morning. So we might as well sprint there to get there a bit faster. And here we are at the first crash site. I think this is called engine, isn't it? Or is it wing? There's an engine. I think. No, there's two engines. This is landing gear. That's it, landing gear. There's two engines. One is uh, under the summit and one is in the ravine. And then you have the wing further up. Be a little bit careful here because on the right there can be a moose. I don't think there is moose now though because the, the trees, they don't have markings. I don't think there'll be a moose now. But in case there is one, it could be right here on the right. And that's a big problem if you see a moose. So if you see one, if you see a moose, just ignore it. Go past it, just leave it alone. <coughs> it's the only moose really that could potentially be in your way. There won't be any other moose that you'll run into in this challenge. They are all in areas that won't really interact with you. Uh, except maybe the dam. I guess there could be a moose in the dam and you could uh, have an interaction with that. But if you do meet a moose and you get stomped, oof, that's bad because then you can't climb ropes. Uh, if that happens, if you get stomped by a moose in this challenge, uh, I think I would just restart because it's going to make it very, very complicated. However, if you have three stims on you, uh, then you can continue because you can climb ropes with a stim. So if you have rope, if you were to get stumped by a moose and your ribs get broken, you can still approach the rope and then you can pop a stim and then boom, you can climb the rope. So it's still possible to complete this challenge with broken ribs. So here we are in the mountainous hut, and seeing as it's about to get dark, we might as well take a minute for ourselves and rest here. You can check the loot out if you want. Another one of these is the fourth okay. one we found. More flares and food. We don't really need any other stuff. There seems to be a knife there we could take, maybe. I guess we'll take a flare, sure. Knife could be handy, maybe. Uh, there's usually a first aid kit, we're gonna check that. Bandage, there's a ski jacket in case it. you need, need that. 
arrows, not necessary, and this is not necessary. On survival, uh, you need a rope to create a shortcut, but you'll usually find a rope on the summit as well, so you don't need it. And now, like if this was me playing by myself, as normally, I would probably continue, but for a walkthrough like this, it's snowy, it's getting dark, I think we'll just wait this out. Uh, one thing I can point out while we wait actually is down here in Crystal Lake, if you're playing on survival and you want a hatchet or knife, you can sometimes find them here. And they'll sometimes be embedded in these little poles or whatever these things are called. So you can look around at them, see if you see anything. I don't see any now though. Um, yeah. So that's uh, something you can do. You can also check under these bolts to see if there's any hidden food or something. So yeah, there's a container, for example. And a summit soda. Summit soda. Fitting. All right, so we're just gonna wait this out a little bit. We don't. We drank some coffee, so we have a lot of energy. So there's nothing really for us to do. I could maybe repair some clothing if I want to. If I have cloth, which I think I do have one of. One cloth. <laughs> Um, what was in here? Uh, I don't think that's any point in doing that. Uh, we can take this and then we can harvest it. And then we can maybe repair something if we want to. It's still light, so how long does this take? I think we can repair this before it gets dark. Uh, now it's too dark soon, so there's no point. I think I'll just wait. I'm going to wait about three hours I think. Get this darkness out of the way. Yeah, that's good. And then we'll have some food and water. Uh, let's just eat this. It's heavy. We'll drink this. And uh, we have so much food. I'm just going to keep drinking these to get the hydration up this way because then it'll be li we'll be lighter. There we go. And now we can sleep. We'll sleep uh, nine hours. Get our energy all the way back. Okay, so there we are, fully rested. It's early morning. Uh, I might as well, seeing as I try to do this, why not just repair it for the fun of it? See if we can get some better quality. There we go, we got that. Uh, yeah, we can keep that. And there we go. And then we can have some more drinks just to get that back as well. And make ourselves a bit lighter. And we'll probably drink a coffee on the way. So now we're going to start the actual journey towards the summit. And there's multiple routes you can take, but they all end up fusing into one or two. So you can actually see the summit from here. I'm not sure if you'll realize that, but you can see it. It's right there. That's the summit. So we're going to go up there. And even easier clue is this, if you uh, close this, you can crouch and you can see the summit right there. <laughs> so that's the summit for you. All right, so the way this works is that you can't go this way. There is a shortcut up there, but it requires a rope already attached, which we haven't done. Basically to get up there, you have to go all the way around the mountain and climb it. And there's two routes. One is down into the ravine and up, uh, which you can do or over a ledge over there, which we'll probably do. And you get up to a day clearing, and when it again splits in two, you can take a rope up to this ledge you can see here. And then there's a cave that goes through the mountain, and then a rope up here. Or you can go all the way around the mountain and climb two ropes to get back up. But the problem with that is that you run into a bear doing it. We're going to take what I think is the uh, the easiest and safest of the routes that requires the least interaction with things and uh, the least amount of like difficult navigation which is we're going to head through the wing so we'll start by going this way uh, we're going to cross crystal lake and head towards the entrance to the ravine so let's do that first So they hydrate the people. <coughs> Alright, so it's early morning, so this is uh, a very cold part of the day, but we have such good gear that we're not cold at all. And in fact, I have so much coffee. Uh, one of the coffees I found is a bit lucky, but 
If you took the route I took, you are very likely to have found coffee in Signal Hill and or the farm. So you should have at least five coffees to use if you do want to use them, but you, you can easily do this challenge without using coffees at all. Uh, you'll also find coffees at the summit if you want to make some there. And uh, if you really, really want coffee, you can also do what I said in the beginning. You can start a game and then you can uh, see if there's coffee in Trappist. And if there isn't, you just exit and restart. I, I'd say there's about a one in four chance of there being coffee when you spawn. So, okay, so now we're approaching the, um, the bear cave. So be a little bit careful here. So we're gonna walk over here, but then on the left, You'll, you'll see a bear cave. And now we're doing the walkthrough in the literal sense, which is walking to preserve energy. So we can use the energy to climb the ropes. We have stims, but let's say we didn't have the stims, so you need to preserve energy. So we're gonna walk as much as we can. We're on the left here now is the bear cave. And the bear looks like he is there and he's sleeping. There he is. Yeah, he's having a little nap. But very often you'll see him patrolling out here. If that's the case, just head up here, take a little detour, you know. And now there's two routes to the summit from here. One is to go down this way into the ravine. If you go down there and head left, you'll do a little zigzag through this ravine all the way up around until eventually you end up basically over there. But I think the straight away is to go this way. It's just more straightforward. So over here is the wing and there's two containers here. So if you want more loot, you can open these. Be a little bit careful here though, because this is another potential moose spawn. So sometimes there'll be a moose here. Uh, it won't usually be right here where you're going. It will be over here. But I'm just telling you that just in case there is a moose, be a little bit careful of, of that. And here there'll be some more containers. Uh, you don't need to open any of these, of course, but if you want to, you can open them. I think there's food in most of them. Uh, there might even be coffee in one of them. I'm not sure if this one or the ravine, but it doesn't really matter. But yeah, if you want some more loot, you can just open these. If you have a hacksaw, you need a hacksaw to open these, which of course I have. I found one, and I found two more so far. I just didn't pick them up. But we don't really need to open them. Just to illustrate, though, I can open one here just to see. Uh, but if you need more loot, you can open these with a hacksaw and then you can see what's inside and you'll see there's a lot of stuff in here. And there we go, and in here there's food, so you can take the beans. We're going to leave all this stuff, but in case you wanted it, there's all this to take. As you can see, there's a lot. In fact, was, all of this was in one of them, so there's a lot of food. Also, by the way, some players, I realized in some of my earlier videos, didn't realize that these containers have two openings. There's this one, and then this one. And that goes for all of them. They all have two. So you can open it twice, and they have two different loots inside of it. So always remember that there's two to open. This one has soda. So this one has all the drinks. So here, this is what was in there. I grabbed one, and here you have this. So there's quite a lot of loot to find in these containers if you need them. And there's another one over there. We don't need any of this, so we're going to leave all of that. But just for future reference, you have all this loot you can grab. And if you are playing on survival and you haven't been to the summit, that is also the reason you should go to the summit because there is enormously amount of loot. There. There's a disgusting amount of loot up there on the summit. Here you can see there's a moose mark, so that means that the moose can spawn in this area uh, on this run. But it won't be here though, in this particular area. I've never seen a moose be here. Even though there's moose markings there, uh, the moose will actually be over here. Uh, so I wouldn't worry about that. From this point onwards, you will not be seeing any wolves for a while. There's only really, from here onwards, there's maybe two wolves in your way and one bear. Uh, we shouldn't they shouldn't be an issue. Mostly you'll see deer and rabbits. We're just gonna walk to the first row so we can get there and then uh, start climbing. So this is the best route I think because it's the most direct. It just goes straight forward, not much hassle or anything. Just walk to that, uh, those containers, the wings, and then you walk up here, right? So you see where I am now. The, here's the wings down there with the containers and you walk up this path up here. You get here, 
and there's a little like little clearing here some very i think this deer carcass is always there so if you see the deer carcass you're on the right track and you just keep going and you'll see there is a uh, crossing here like a log crossing so you want to go on that and the lower the roll we won't be needing it so we're going to go on here and down below us now is the ravine the team of mountain ravine down there that cave right here that's the cave to ash canyon if you want to go there you just go down the ravine where i showed you earlier and then follow it down like this and you end up in ash canyon that's one of the ways to ash canyon is too he's going to cross this if you're really afraid of heights and you absolutely hate crossing these things the alternative route you can take is to go down the route where the bear was and you end up kind of like over here and then you just walk this way instead and you do a little zigzaggy thing and eventually you'll go up through these rocks and out and you come out more or less where I'm gonna go now so you can go that route instead if you're really not sure then look up a map of Timberwolf Mountain there's several of them so now I'm just gonna go in more or less a straight line if the weather for you is very very bad like really foggy or anything you can always wait it out you can uh, wait in, to, in the mountainous hut until the weather clears or you could uh, start a fire and start warming up and just see what happens to the weather or you could sleep that's another thing you can do and in fact there is a cave here you can use if you like uh, for shelter and it's uh, coming up on the right, right in front of us here. So let's see here. So over here on my right, I think it is. Um, yeah, there it is. So if you need a break at this point in time, for some reason, maybe the weather's bad, maybe you're cold, you can, uh, you can go in here, this cave here. And you'll be warm inside, especially with the gear that you have. So you can go here, you can have a little rest, you can make a fire if you want to. Then you can just put down your bedroll, and you can just sleep here, for example. And then you continue later. So this is a perfect place to have a little break, if you need it. We're not going to do that, though. Now you're going to continue. And let's continue a straight line. Remember, we came from over here. You can see our footprints into the cave. I'm just going to continue this way. Oops. I'm going to continue this way. There we are. <coughs> and soon we'll be seeing the rope, which is the first rope. There's three ropes to take. You have to climb three ropes no matter how you do it. And it's more a question of uh, which route you want to take. But you can get to this point without climbing any ropes. It's just the next rope is the first one. If you end up taking the other route that I talked about, that I haven't shown, but if you do end up taking that, you come out over here, you come out this way, uh, or over there, depending on how you hug the wall. But then you come out here, and from here on, uh, it's the same. So now we're approaching our first rope. And what you can do here, you can just tank the rope normally, if you like. Uh, if you're too tired, you can use a stim, or you can use an energy drink. Be aware that if you use a stim, uh, or an energy drink, to get all the way full with stamina, you can still only climb the rope if you are not heavy. So if you are heavy with stuff and you pop a stim, you're not gonna be able to climb the rope either. You, you still need to be light. So keep that in mind. We're going to drink a coffee and then we're gonna climb this rope. Because we have so many and even if you've had bad luck in your run, you should have at least five coffees because you will find a coffee in farm or signal hill or both or trappers or somewhere else so you, i think i found 20 coffees in total but you should have at least five so let's say you got to this point and you hadn't used any so far then here you can use your first coffee and you can just drink this we're nearly full stamina ready i mean just climb this easy uh your uh carry capacity won't be affected until your stamina is about half so when your stamina or your fatigue is halfway drained then things will start becoming heavy so that's still a while from now here i would recommend taking out your revolver or your flare because there is a wolf in this area 
and he patrols around here so he can be very close to the rope and suddenly like ambush you and you, you don't want that we want to do once you come out the rope we just stick to the right and uh, here by the way we have the entrance to ash canyon the other entrance is too a lot of people seem to miss this one they find it very confusing but there is a cave to my right right now there it is see this cave here this cave also leads to ash canyon then there's a cave right there this is the deer clearing cave and then the rope is behind us here so if you're ever in Tim Wolf mountain and it's on survival or some other challenge and you want to go to ash canyon and you get up to this rope and you can't find it, just see, once you see this cave here, well, then just look to your right, and then here it is, right there. That's a loading screen cave, so you go in there, and then the game will load and set you into a system. And in this area too, there's a few places you can rest. You can go into this cave up here, or you can rest inside, you can have a little sleep, you can regenerate some stamina here if you want to. So if you don't have coffee for some reason, or no stims or anything, you can go into this cave and have a little sleep and then recover some stamina and have a little break right you can do that very often the day we'll have a little congregation in there <laughs> so there's a little cave you can use a little piece a little break if you if you need to and i think it has a name i think it's just, just cave you can also sometimes find coal in here we don't need it though but there's wood so yeah oh there is coal yeah so you can have a little break in here if you want to nice little cave uh, we're going to head uh, continue our journey though, because we're still looking very good. Now, if you do want even more loot, there is some loot over there by this fallen tree there. You see these birch saplings there, and then there's a fallen tree. Underneath there is usually a container or two, and you can open that as well with a hacksaw uh, for some additional loot if you want to. I think it's always there, but I'm not 100% sure on that. And anyway. That's some extra loot for you. And there can be a wolf that's like around this general area as well. But he will always be on the left here. So if you haven't seen him already, and he's not, there's the container. You can see it right there. There's the container right there. So you can open that if you want some more loot. The wolf is usually in this part of the uh, of the area. We're going to continue though. We're going to go past um, the container. If you're still finding it a bit difficult to know where I am, remember we came up from the rope. We will pass this cave to Ash Canyon. There's the other cave here, and then we're just walking past here. If you find it confusing, what you can do is you climb up the rope and you just hug this wall on the right. Just hug the wall on the right, 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 right. Hug the wall, 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 and you'll end up going this way. So if you're not sure, if you may be watching this walkthrough, and then you come here yourself, and you're like, I'm not entirely sure if this is the same area as Ak was in, well, then just hug the wall. Just stay on the right, hug this, and then eventually uh, you'll get this area here. So now you're going to walk this straight forward, and in this area there is a possibility of one more wolf, which will be in our way. It's not always there, but it's sometimes there, so we might have to scare away that wolf. And there is a bear. The bear can be avoided completely, but sometimes it's kind of like in your way, and then you just kind of, you got to wait it out, or circumvent it, or scare it off. But I'll show you that when it happens. And I would recommend taking the easier route of the two possibilities coming up to avoid the bear completely. Cold. And I'll show you what I mean. Coming over this ridge here, uh, we're now heading straight ahead. Uh, if you are not familiar with this region and you end up in this area and there is a fog or a blizzard or something, I would recommend going into the cave I showed you earlier now and just resting there and waiting for the air weather to clear because it's not necessarily easy to navigate uh, this area without visibility so i would recommend doing that okay so over this ridge line here we could potentially see a wolf there's also rabbits there so sometimes the wolf gets distracted by the rabbits let's see is there a wolf i don't see a wolf but be careful sometimes it comes out of nowhere a little corner here also if you need another break you can there's a little corner here you can use to have a little bit of a, a breather in here nice little safe area where no one can hurt you and now we're coming up here and be careful if you're not sure about the wolf don't go straight against the wall here because what if he's around a corner go a little bit more on the right here give it some space so if the wolf shows up you have time to react have your revolver out 
keep a lookout. I don't hear anything either. Headsets are great here. I don't see any wolves, I don't hear any wolves, so I think we're good. There's a shortcut available here, you can go up here. There's a little shortcut, but we're not going to do that. But we're going to keep our ears open now, because it can be a bear around. In fact, there he is. There's the bear. This is the only bear that's kind of like in our way, but no matter what, he will be in our way. And in fact, he's blocking our path to Timberwolf Mountain. But we're going to take the other route. There's two options. Once you get to this point, we have reached another crossroads. See, now we're in another, like, junction here. This little opening here. <clears throat> what this is, you can either go straight this way here, or you can go to the right here. Both of them will lead to the summit. The issue with going this way here is that... Well, you saw the reason. There's a bear in the way, and he patrols this entire road from basically here I am now, all the way up to the river up there where the next rope is. So he will be in your way. So if you want to go this way, you're going to have to get rid of the bear. You're going to have to either navigate around him or scare him off or kill it. So that creates a complication. So to do it easier and safer, uh, don't go this way. Instead, once you come up here, you go this way over here. This way. Then you can avoid the bear entirely. He won't be an issue. And that will take you to another rope. And here we are. We're not going to, from this point onwards, until we get to the summit, we will not encounter any bears or any wolves. So you can just safely put the revolver down. There won't be any issue. And I have a coffee, so I'm going to drink another coffee here to just make this climb a little bit easier. But again, if you don't have coffee, you don't need to drink it. You can just climb with the energy you have left. Or you could have slept in those caves I've shown you, right? You can sleep in that cave in the day clearing. You can sleep in that cave before the first roll. Or you can sleep in that little crevice I showed you. There's also, also areas you can stay in where you can sleep, get some energy back, and then you're fine. And here we are now. So here we are. We still have four and a half days left, well, five days. This area called the Secluded Shelf is one of the areas now leading up to the summit, which is now straight above us. But this cave in front of us here will lead us through the mountain and to the, straight to the next rope, which makes things easier. Just to give you an idea of where we are, it's a little snowy and foggy now, but just so you can see, we are now up on the Secluded Shelf that I pointed at earlier. Let's just make sure we don't go down. So if you look over there, I think, is that right? Let me see, let me get my bearings a little bit. So that's the ravine. Yes, that's right. So it's a bit hard to see, but right there you can see the pier, which is the mountaineer's hut. So that's where we slept. And then we walked all the way over there, and then we walked to the wing, which is over there. We walked past this mountain thing here. We crossed the ravine. Walked all the way over here. Here's that little cave I talked about. We walked this way. We climbed the rope up, day clearing, and then we zigzagged and we ended up here. So that's basically where we are. We're looking at Mountain Assault right there. That's where it is. That's Mountain Assault. Okay, so that's where we are. So let's continue our journey. We're now going to head into this cave here. And you're completely safe in here. No scary wolves or anything here. Unless Intelim has ambushed us with a surprise patch. Aha, uh -huh, now there's a super bear in here. Yeah. Then we're going to light our lantern. And you can find some small miscellaneous loot in here too, like this coal, which we don't really need. But if you are cold, you could grab it. And I think there's a couple of backpacks and torches and stuff, but there's nothing really to look for. At this stage in the challenge, there isn't really anything that's missing that you need. Just hug the wall on the right, just stay on the right the entire time. Uh, not, most of these networks are not difficult to navigate. It's not like Hashira Valley, for example, where it can be more complicated. Here you just kind of like hug the right all the time, right? Because as you saw, once I came in, I'm just sticking to the right, and I might end the room like this. Can't go there, okay, well, we'll go this way. Oh, can't go here. Oh, well, that's all right, I'll keep hugging the right, hug the right. Okay, couldn't go there either. Okay, next one. Okay, hang on. Oh, couldn't go there either. Keep hugging the right. Oh, oh, here's a passage. And so on. And then uh, if you do that, you'll eventually reach the right area. 
So if you're not really sure where to go, just choose one wall, left or right, in this case the right one, uh, and just hug it, follow it the entire time, and you'll be fine. There we are. Keep going to the right. You see, I'm just hugging the right wall the entire time. And it's really not that hard. Even if you took a wrong turn, you'll be fine. It's not that complicated. Then we come out here, have some more wood. Go up these paths here. And now we should come to the exit anytime soon. There we are. Just keep hugging the right here. And I'm just hugging the right, hugging the right until I see the light. And here we are. So this cave will now lead us at the plateau before the summit. And here you can make a choice. Right? So here's the exit before you. And you can make a choice here. So if you look at the time of day, there's still some daylight left. And we have half our energy used, but we have coffee, we have an energy drink, and we have stims. So we don't really need to stop. But what you could do is if you don't have those things or if you're not really sure or maybe it's a different time of day for you what you can do now is you can put the bedroll down and sleep and then you can recover some uh, energy and then you can continue climbing normally which is perfectly fine so you see because you spawn with a bedroll if you move from cave to cave or building to building you actually don't need these stims or drinks or even coffees at any point it's perfectly possible to do this without it. You just sleep in the caves and places that allow you so you can regenerate stamina. And then you just walk uh, wherever you can and you should be able to get everywhere, no problem. We have so many stims and whatnot that we're going to use this for the purpose of getting up to the summit. So we're going to go out of here and up to the summit. So here we are, this is the plateau before the summit. When you come out of here, you just head straight down. And now to our left is a rope going down. This is the wrong way. This is not where you should go. This leads to the other route. So if we had taken the other route through the bear, so if you remember the bear that I decided to ignore, if you had gone through the bear, scared him off or gone around him, you would have ended up here. And then you have to climb this rope to get up. And in survival mode, uh, if you come here and you find another rope, what you can do is you can go to just over there, like right there, there is a rope anchor. And you can place a rope there uh, for future use. And if you do that, you can get from Mountaineer's Hut to Summit much faster. You can just follow the river from Mountaineer's Hut all the way up here and climb the ropes and then you get up here. So that's perfectly possible. We're not going to do that though because we took the safe route. We came out of that cave that's right over here now. There's the cave on our right. We came out of that and we're just going to go straight this way now. Um, if you're desperate for food, there's usually some mushrooms there, there's some rabbits. There's a few things you can, you can use. And uh, <clears throat> now we're heading for the last rope. There's one more cave you can use to rest in here if you really want to. But if you want to sleep, I think I would recommend going back in here rather than sleeping here because that's indoors. Well, this is outdoors, so you'll be much colder here. So this is not as safe. But if you want to, though, there is a little cave right here. So here's the cave. And you usually find a rope here too. And it's a little bit of miscellaneous food and whatnot. So yeah, so that's uh, also a little, little nugget. This rope you can also use to attach to the rope anchor I talked about. Or you can use it over here. Uh, there's a rope anchor over here. So you can attach it there if you like. It has, serves no purpose to do that now though on a challenge like this. But in survival mode you can do it. Okay, so we came out of this cave over here. And then you just head left, go this way. And then you can see the last rope here. This is the final rope to the summit. The last of the ropes. 
And here, like I said before, you can now use your coffee, you can use your gold drink, you use your stim, or you could sleep in a cave or something and regenerate your stamina and then get up there. We have so many stims that I would recommend at this point in time you use them. Because then you can climb all the way up there, no problem. If you want, you can climb halfway there and then use the stim. So let's equip our first stim and use it. <sighs> climb up. Remember that you still, even if you use a stim, you are still going to be heavy if you have too much stuff. So make sure you are actually light enough to climb. And we will be able to get up there in one go. You don't need to take any breaks. You don't need to stop on these ledges here on the left. Just go. And when you get to the top, you might as well sprint all the way to the summit as well. So here we are at the summit. All the way up. And we might as well use this stim and sprint. So we're going to go straight forward now. <coughs> and head straight to the summit. Here you can see the plane. So really no problem at all. Uh, if you have poor visibility, don't worry about it. Just get up to the rope and then run in a straight line, straight ahead. And eventually you'll get all the way there. And here we are at the summit. There we go. And this is where you'll find the flare gun, which we need for this challenge. And the thing is, I actually brought a hacksaw with me. But we don't need it, uh, because for two reasons. One is that there will be a hacksaw here. If I just look around, I should find a hacksaw somewhere. Here it is. So you see, I don't actually need it. But it was just to illustrate the point. I'm going to use a coffee now, just to get some energy back. And here we are. So the thing is, let's do the first things first. This is the summit and there's a bunch of these containers here. So much of it. And there's so much loot in here. So if you're playing on survival, you really should come up here. It has the most loot in the entire game. And as you saw, it wasn't that hard to get there, was it? So, and you don't need the stims either. You can just climb and sleep. So you should definitely come here because the loot is so abundant. You're not even going to be able to carry all of it down. But we, what we came here for though is this. We came here for this, the flare gun. So this is what we need to complete the what challenge. We so we're going to take this along with all the shells. And you can see that our quest has now changed. It now says travel to the top of the lighthouse and desolation point. So we have a revolver and we have our flare gun. I will point out though that you only need one of these shells to actually complete the challenge and we have seven. So feel free to use them to deter other animals, most notably the bear, because the wolves you can just get rid of with the revolver. It works just as well. But the flare gun works on the bear, or moose. Now that being said though, there's a whole bunch of stuff around here. I would maybe recommend looting these ones. I think it's this one, because in this one is a medicine and you can find more stims and stuff there. So you could maybe open that. I think it's this one. No, this was the revol this. this was the ammunition one. So here you'll find revolvers and rifles. You know, see, it has a rifle. If you haven't found one already, you can get that here. Uh, so yeah, I'll take the revolver stuff. Have uh, <laughs> so many foot bullets. <laughs> and it might be this one. Let's <coughs> see. They tend to always be the same, I just kind of run yeah, so there's bandages, another stim. I don't need this, this. Yeah. More bandages, another stim. Yeah, so as you can see, it's very abundant. So in there we found two more stims. We now have six of them. We can pretty much sprint back to the desolation point from here. And uh, all of these other ones also have they have uh, clothing, they have food, they have tools. So there's all sorts of things to loot here. We don't need any of it though, because we have such good gear already. And remember, when the challenge is over, you lose all this stuff. So there's no point really hoarding any of this stuff. We don't need it. I don't need this anymore, actually. Let's drop that. I don't need this anymore either. So we can drop that too. We don't need the knife. We can drop that. And we don't need this many flares either. So let's drop all these things make it a bit easier for ourselves. 
But yeah, if you wanted to, you could loot all of this and you just carry a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, you'll you'll guarantee to find an expedition parker. I think it's in, I think it's in this one. Uh, oh, I don't actually. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to open these, uh, feel free to open it and you'll get a ton of loot. There's a whole bunch of stuff. There's even a flashlight there, apparently. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of loot to be found here. But for this challenge, we don't need any of it, though. We don't need it. But for you, uh, if, if, if it was a survival run, then yeah, I think I would come here and take as much as you can. And now for the way down. So if you want, you can loot all this stuff, but you don't need to. And we have our distress pistol. And the thing is now, to get back home, you can do the exact same route. You can do it the exact same way we came back. Just do exactly what I showed you so far, but in reverse. So you can do that if you want to. You go back down the rope we came, through the mountain, you come down to this shelf thing that's down here, remember? Go down to their clearing, follow the route all the way along, and you end up back here. So you can do that, no problem. Alternatively, you can take one of the rope we found, place it at that rope anchor I showed you, and then you can climb down to the river, and you can follow the river down like this, all the way to the Wolf Mountain is up. So you can do that. But I'm going to show you a shortcut. Uh, normally in my walkthroughs I don't show shortcuts because they are kind of cheesy and exploitive, but this one is so commonly used and so useful to know uh, for survival included, that I'm going to show it. And it's how to just get down this mountain straight from here to mountain itself. You can do it in two minutes, two minutes real time. But we're not going to rush it, so I'm not going to do that fast. It works very easy, so I hope you're ready for this. And you can use this in survival mode too. It's perfectly safe. You won't die. You might get a sprain, but you won't die. And you can take all of this good loot here with you, you know? So, how does it work? Well, you stand here at the edge of the plane, and you can see it, that's the mountain that's up right there. And what you do is, you just hop down here on the side. Boom. And there's a corpse here. And you want to loot this corpse too, because it could have stim uh, on it if you want it. Uh, flare shell this time, and maple, and an MRE, which we don't need. And a gold it. drink, okay, you can take that. I'm actually a little bit heavy, that's okay though. So, then now, now you've done that, you go on the side to pass this little metal thing. You go here on the side, and then you go under the plane. Right? And now if you want to get back up, you can just go here, just go up here, and you get back up. What we want to do is go on the right, uh, sorry, the left there. Just go along these little edges there. Go down here. It's perfectly safe. You're not going to slip and fall. Just go along here. Very, very easy. And you end up in this little slope here. See? A very nice and even slope. Now the summit is right there. And what you do now is you just, you just walk down there. If you want, if you're worried about sprains, you can crouch and just crouch downwards like this you're perfectly safe. But you can also just walk. You can run if you want. But, and you get down here. And from here you have here you have as many options as you want really. Uh, you can go this way or you can go this way on the right. Just follow the slopes. And then you can find the little edge over here. Uh, you can you don't have to go this way exactly but here for example is good. Right? Just go down here. You can crouch again. And go safe like this. Crouch and be safe. <coughs> crouch down here, perfectly safe. No harm will come to you. Maybe a sprain, that's it. And here's another slope, so you can just go over the slope here. And just walk down the slope. <coughs> oh, there's, there's my ankle. Just, you can just crouch, go down like this. Do, do, do. So as you can see, it's perfectly fine. You might take a little bit of bruising by a little jump like that. And there we are. Let's bandage that uh, foot. And then this. And there we are. Now we are down. Now we are here in the plateau just above Mount Nearsat. And now we can just go from here. And it's very easy. So as you can see, this is a very useful shortcut. You can use this in survival as well. Just remember you have to go all the way around to get back up there if you didn't put the rope anchor down. So it's a little bit of a detour to go back up there. But this is one way of getting back down very easily. So you can see there's a summit right there. And all we did really was to jump down this mountain. It's a very handy shortcut. It's been around for years. They haven't really changed or patched it out uh, because it's mostly about getting the loot down. 
So it's a, a shortcut I recommend using. And now for the rest of it, it's uh, very easy. You can walk, uh, you can use this rope, and climb down this rope. Or you can go this way and go to the river and walk down the river. Or if you really want to, I can show you one more shortcut, but you don't really need this shortcut. But if you want to, uh, instead of going down this uh, rope here, you can just go past the rope. So just walk past the rope here. Very, very easy. Walk past the rope until you get to these trees here. And then you can just do what you just did from the summit. You know, the same way you got down from here to here. You can now just do the same thing here, just walk down here. And again, if you're not sure, just crouch. Crouch, crouch, crouch. Be safe. Crouch down. You can there's no real answer where to go, you just crouch and worst case scenario you'll make a little fall, you know, like this. You know, that's it. And then you're down. But you don't need to use this shortcut. Oh that's the bear. Hello. You can climb the rope, you know, that this this rope that was right here. What you can do, you can uh, you can pop a stim and climb down it, or the uh, go drink, or whatever. So you can do that too. And now you are down here, right by Crystal Lake. And how the mountainous hut is right in front of us, as you can see. So that wasn't so hard, was it? So that's the shortcut of how to get down here, and it saves you a lot of time. If you really don't want to do that, or if you're opposed to doing that sort of thing, then you have to take the route back around where you came from. You basically have to do the route I showed you, but in reverse, or you have to put a rope down by the rope anchor and then climb down and follow the river. If you do that, if you go to the rope anchor I showed you and place a rope, you can climb down it and then you get to the river, which will lead you down this path, and eventually you'll get down here, and then you get to the mountain itself. So that's another option, but the way I showed you now is the fastest. It will take you here all the way to Mount up from the summit that you can see right there. And it's very, very easy, it's very safe. Worst case scenario, you'll take some fall damage, and that's about it. And now we are back at Mount up and from this point onwards, uh, in reality, you really could just go to Desolation Point from here. Because, at least in my particular situation, I have so many stims, I have six of them, plus two gold drinks and a bunch of coffee. So it would be perfectly possible from this point onwards, to just use those stims in succession, as, long, as well as some coffee and whatnot, and just run all the way to Desolation Point. We could do that, but we still have almost five days, so why rush it? Why not just sleep here? We are warm, we have time, why don't we just take our time and not rush things? So let's do that. Let's uh, eat this MRE. Fill us all the way up. <laughs> and then we'll have a bit of water and then we can sleep. And then we can continue once we're rested. So let's do that. Let's have a little rest, recover some stamina, and then we continue our journey. So let's take 12 hours, shall we? All right, so now it's almost morning. It's still a little bit dark, so we can always wait a little bit before we head out, just to be safe. Let's eat something. Uh, now we're getting to the point where we have so much food and we're never ever going to be using all of this stuff because we're only going to be sleeping maybe one more time, if at all. So I'm gonna start dropping some things. I'm gonna drop these things that are kind of heavy. Don't really need them anymore. And I'll eat something like these, just to get some of that back up. Because uh, uh, we most likely can go in one straight line now back to the desolation point where we'll fire our flare gun. There we are. And I think I want to wait about one hour or maybe two before I head out. <coughs> maybe two hours. But we can try sleeping one hour. And then the daylight will come. And we are well fitted. And we could easily have been even warmer than this. Because if you look at the clothing I have... Uh, there definitely would have been another air wrap up there. There definitely would have been a cowage and sweater or fisherman sweater up there. Definitely another one of these and probably another one of these too and climbing socks. 
So I have at the moment 21 degrees warmth, but I definitely if I had gone up there and actually looted the stuff, I probably would have been closer to 27 or with repairs that probably even 30. So uh, definitely can be even warmer than this, but I don't think it should be an issue. At the moment though, it's quite foggy. So I think, especially for your viewers sake, I think I'm going to just pass some time until it clears up because it's uh, there we go that's much better now we can actually see something before we head out let's have a drink of Stacy's grape soda named after a streamer called Stacy who was one of the early supporters of the long dark and we are good we have a lot of supplies left still we don't really have that long to go we have our weapons most notably our flare gun and we are now going to go from Timwolf Mountain through Pleasant Valley, Coastal Highway, and Desolation Point. And we can probably do this in one go because we have so much stuff. We have uh, stims, and we have energy drinks, and we have coffee. So from this point onwards, it's pretty much just getting there. We have still a lot of time. We have four days, four hours, 40 minutes, loads of time. So I'm probably going to do this in one go from here on. And I probably won't be sleeping. I'll just be using stims and coffee because I have them. Oh, if, this is, if this is you and you don't have any of those things, you can easily sleep different places in Pleasant Valley, in the mine, especially in Coastal Highway, in the houses, or anywhere else you might want to. So we'll go through that as we get there. But for now, we have our flare gun and we can head home. Let's get rescued, shall we? <coughs> so we're going to head pretty much the same way we went before. And I'm just going to start running a bit also because I have so much coffee, I have so many stims that. I'm not going to run out of anything anytime soon. And in fact, I'm going to drink my first coffee already now. So far, we only really used... I've drank quite a few oops, coffees, but um, I only really used two uh, strategically, which is for the rope. So if you are doing the walkthrough and you only found those five coffees that you found in Trappers or in Signal Hill or something, then you can always use one for the first rope, another one for the second one, and then if you don't use the stim, you can use one for the third one or whatever, and then use the rest now. Because now, you take advantage that it's a clear day, you have time, you're not in a hurry, you could just from this point onwards just walk all the way there. Really no problem at all. But seeing as we have so much stims, so much energy, so much of everything, you might as well just try and get there a bit faster. But really, uh, as you've seen, I have slept uh, three times. Uh, we climbed a rope, we only used one stim. We used a few coffees, which were kind of like optional. And I, after Timwolf Mountain, like, sorry, after Mountain is half especially, I haven't really looted much loot-wise. Most of the stuff I've looted has been just to illustrate that it's there. And we are doing fine with warmth. We have over four days left. I could go now to a uh, completely different region if I wanted to. Uh, we're very, very well set and I've been taking this very slow. So if this is you playing, just be, you know, rest assured that you will have enough time to complete this. Just take it slow, go by Pleasant Valley, rest there, go to Timberwolf Mountain, maybe rest there again. Go back up to go to the summit, then rest again, either before the summit or after. And maybe one more time out, and even then you still have probably two or three days to spare. So this is pretty easy. Uh, you, seven days sounds like it's scaringly close, but it might only feel that way because you're entering a region that maybe you don't feel confident in. But Team of Mountain is a great region. It's not easy to traverse, seeing as all these different levels and you got the summit and everything. But it is a very good region to be in. So if you're playing survival, I would recommend that you familiarize yourself with Timberwolf Mountain because it's a really cool region. You can easily stay there in Mountaineer's Hut and survive. Uh, so don't be afraid of it as a region. It's, it's, it's got great opportunities. For our sector, we now have everything. We have all the gear we need. We have food, we have water, we have weapons, we have medicine. So we don't really have anything going for us now other than just getting to Desolation Point and firing this flare gun. And we could take our time and just go and explore things, loot more stuff. But what's the point though? Like this challenge is over once we get there. We can't really delay this. So we might as well just get there and utilize what we have. 
If, by the way, you get to this point here, uh, this uh, roll pair in Pleasant Valley, uh, and you're too heavy for some reason, you can go down this way. I'm not going to do it now, but you can go along this side here and then down uh, without taking any damage. But we're not going to do that because that's kind of like a like an exploit shortcut when they're going to take the normal route. Climbing down. This is the last rope you're going to climb. You're not going to climb any more ropes after this. And uh, also since this is down, if for some reason you were heavy or tired, you can just billy goat on the sides, but you should really shouldn't be if you made it this far. So, we're gonna keep going. Uh, we got a clear day, we got good weather, we got lots of ammo and everything, so we're just gonna get there as soon as we can. We're gonna use our coffees, we're gonna use our stims, and yeah, just really just get there. I'm gonna have the flare pistol um, equipped because if this, um, if something happens, I can use the flare gun to just scare off the wolf or bear or whatever I run into. It's extremely powerful. This weapon will scare off any animal, including moose and bear. So just have it ready. You just need one flare shell to actually finish the challenge. So now we're heading, uh, now we're gonna head into different territory. We basically retraced our steps. But now when we came down the rope, instead of going right, we went left, and you're basically going to find this road here. So here's the road. This is the road that goes all the way to Thompson's uh, Crossing. Is it Thompson's Crossing? Uh, yeah, it does, but this way. If you go this way, this eventually leads to the plane crash. So it leads all the way to the, the plane crash over there. So basically you want to head down from the rope and come, uh, it doesn't really matter if you went exactly the route I did, but you can go by the commuter's lament or whatever it's called, or point of disagreement, that's what that's called, with the cars there, head to these cars, and you find this road, you can tell it's a road because of these like dents in the, in, the, in the snow, which you can use to navigate if you're in a blizzard, if you find these little, little dents here, then you know that you're on a road. And now you're just going to follow this road all the way until we get to the mining road, so we're just going to follow this road all the way there. I'm going to pretty much run across like the equivalent to about one third of Pleasant Valley along the wall. The actual mine we want to go to is about, mm, it's something like over there. And you can run across the ice, but why do that? Let's just go here along the actual road. Now one thing to be careful about with this road is that there is a bear that patrols this area. Uh, and you can run into him. This is another reason why you want to have the flare gun equipped. Because that means it's less likely that you'll get attacked by the bear. So the bear is usually around roughly this area. And he usually hibernates in this cave that's right there. That cave right there. Uh, not always, but usually it's there. So be a little bit careful on this particular road because you could run into a bear. Um, and if so, you got to have this flare gun ready. If you have the revolver up, that's not going to do anything. If the bear, if the bear attacks you and you shoot at it with the revolver, it doesn't stop the attack. Just trust me. Like uh, I've been in bear encounters where they attacked me and then I've shot maybe uh, you know ten rounds in the bear. And it doesn't doesn't deter it in the slightest. It's, it's pretty much you have to hope to kill it. And that's it. However, the flare gun will scare off the bear. If you're lucky, you'll even kill the bear. But that doesn't make a difference in this shovel. So the flare gun is the most important weapon in the game, really. And I do recommend that uh, if you play on uh, any difficulty, whether, or whether it's a challenge or even story, if you have it, or survival, you, generally speaking, want to have this weapon equipped at all times. If you play on survival, there's limited how many shells you can find. On Intelope, you only have 12 shells, but on lower difficulties, you can find much more. But I think a general rule of thumb uh, that is very good is to always have it equipped especially when you're in an area where you're not quite sure uh, where there's wolves and, and bears and that sort of thing because if you have it and then suddenly oh, oh there's a bear you can just shoot it and then you will scare them off it will potentially save the life of your character so I highly recommend just having this one equipped you can't accidentally firing it by clicking clicking the firing button it won't do anything unlike the revolver so you always be safe just carrying it and suddenly oh, a bear, you'll just shoot it and scare it off. So here we are the derelict cabins. 
Now there's a corpse in there we can loot and some other things. But we don't need it. We're just going to keep following the road. See, now more the road is becoming visible. So we can just follow that. Uh, even easier now in the clear weather. And again, we have so much time that if you are out and the weather turns bad, let's have a coffee. And then you could just wait it out. You can just wait for the weather to improve so that you can then get better visibility. Is that a wolf on the ice down there? I think it is, yeah. So you just take your time and, and utilize the, your resources to your advantage. Like you saw I did in, in the Mountaineer's Hut. In the beginning it was kind of dark and a bit foggy. So I decided to just wait until it cleared up. And I have loads of food and water and supplies. So I can just wait it out until conditions are good. And then I can start moving. You know? So you should do the same. Take the time for your advantage. And now I'm pretty much just running just because I want to uh, get there. The, the hard part is done. We have secured ourselves in terms of resources. Before we got to the summit, we found weapons, we found tools, we found a bunch of stuff. Then we took the route up to the summit, which I think the most daunting thing for a lot of people for this challenge is getting up to the summit. But once that's done, it's literally just about sprinting to the finishing line, really. So here we are at the mining road. When you get to this part of the road, so you can just follow this all the way until you get here. If you reach Thompson's Crossing, then you've gone too far. So you need to come back. But you want to come to this place where it says mining road. Only problem is there's no trespassing. So you're kind of stuck now. You can't go there. It's illegal. So yeah, the challenge ends here. Thank you. Goodbye. I'm just kidding. We're Astrid, we don't care about rules. So we're gonna follow this road. <laughs> so now we can just follow this road up here and again be aware of wolves. There we are. Now with the wolves you can just use the revolver. He hasn't seen me yet, so I can just fire a shot like this. And you see he runs away. Remember to not aim at him in case it triggers a charge. This will scare him off. It may not be far enough, but uh, seems good. And now if I have a suspicion that oh, maybe he's nearby still, mm, I could just shoot another round like this and hope he runs away. And as you can see, that's exactly what happened. I couldn't see the wolf, but I knew it was around there somewhere, and he got afraid and he ran away. That's what the, the revolver is for. And that's the purpose of the revolver. It's basically a different version of the flare gun. And it works really well with wolves. It's the main reason it's in existence. Uh, but you can't find it on interlope or anything. Though. But the flare gun, or the stress pistol, or whatever you prefer calling it, is just more powerful. It scares off anything, except aurora wolves. That's the only exception. It doesn't scare those off. So let's follow these signs, the mining road. So the sort of dents in the road that you've been following, they stop now. But the signs, mining road. So you just follow that still. And I'm just going to keep running and I'm going to keep drinking coffee and that sort of thing. And if you ever are interested in speed running a challenge like this, or any long dark challenge, this is a good kind of indication of how you generally speaking need to do it. You basically run uh, all, the, all the time and then uh, when the sprint meter runs out, you start walking and then whenever you can, if you have it, you take a drink of coffee <coughs> or a stim or whatever and then you just get there as far as you can so if ever you want to speed run a challenge this is how you do it now we might as well use uh, flare i suppose uh, let's use this it's quieter so now we're entering cinder hills mines if you're wondering where this is if you haven't been here if you go out on the ledge here you can see where we are so right down there is thompson's crossing in Pleasant Valley. Uh, the barn is over here and the farm is in the distance there. We came out somewhere over here earlier. We walked up to Signal Hill which is this plateau over here. And then we walked across into the farm all the way up and into the rope which we then walked down, back down like here. So we kind of gone through nearly all of Pleasant Valley but that's where we are. Now we're going to go through Cinder Hills Mines. One thing I will note about Cinder Hills Mines is that you can usually find a stim here if you want it. Uh, on Interloper, this is one of the guaranteed stims. 
Uh, there are three places in this mine where you can find a emergency stim on interloper. But on lower difficulties, it's not guaranteed. But you can still check, you know, the the um, <coughs> um, the first aid kits and so on. Yeah, you can go either left or right. Doesn't you can't really get lost in the mine. They all read to the same place. However, if you go left there, let me do that again so I can just illustrate clearly what was happening there. So when you come down from the main entrance there, you can go left or right. And it doesn't really matter which road you take. In the mines, they all lead the same place. You, you will get there eventually. It's easier to navigate than the caves. Uh, in this particular case, when you come from, from Pleasant Valley, you want to go here and take a left. And the reason you want to take a left in this particular one is because it gives you access to a ledge where there can be a stim and ammunition. So here's the ledge, and as you may have spotted already, there is indeed a stim here. And on the, if you play survival on interloper, you can also find the stim here. It may not be in this exact location, it might be further into the mine, but you will find it. And you can also find Maybe. rifle ammunition. If you're playing the whiteout challenge and you can't find rifle ammunition, you should come in here because they are always there. That's good. And now to get further down, you can either go back and around and then you end up over there. Or you could just jump down here. Or you could just jump down here. It's like not even a jump really it's so so short but yeah then you end up here and again you have two paths and you can take either but again just stick to the left so you remember in uh, in the cave in Timwolf Mountain you just stick to the right the entire time and here you can stick to the left pretty much the entire time and you can see some food here and some other stuff we don't really need any of this stuff so we're just gonna walk past it keep going we can run a little bit. Let's keep going. And we're just staying uh, pretty much left the whole time. Here it's to the right. I think here it's like a little dead end. Sometimes there's a corpse here, but they usually stone at them. So, so here it's to the, the right. <coughs> but even if I went to the left the entire time, I would go down there and then we'll come up here. And then you come to this area. Here you can also find the stem. You can lay here on this, uh, on this shelf here. Uh, sometimes there's also a first aid kit there. And then again, you're going to stick to the left. Stick to the left. Left, 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 left. And sure enough, you'll come to the exit. So, in Timberwolf Mountain, you can pretty much stay to the right the entire time. Here in Cinder Hills Mines, for this challenge, when you come up this one, you stick to the left the entire time, and you'll come out really easy. And here is the third place that you can find a stem. You can lay on like the shelf right here. So uh, the stem will usually be, always be in one of those areas. More this revolver ammunition, why not? Okay, so there we are. And that's it. So that's it for Sin Hill's Mines. And we can leave. And now it's pretty much just letting us go across the ice. And that's about it. That's pretty much it. So from here it's pretty easy, we're just going to run across the ice, provided the weather allows it. And if not, we'll go some other route. So here we are at the crossroads. And uh, it, at these crossroads, you can either go left and you can go to the lookout tower, the abandoned lookout tower. And you can always sleep there. Or you can sleep in the mines if you like, you can sleep in the mines. No problem, both are fine. The fastest way, however, to the desolation point is to go to the right. And then you go down here, and then at the end of this road here is the uh, trailers. And if you want, you can just run down this slope here, just run all the way down, and you get to the ice. But for the sake of argument, why don't we just do it the clean way, we follow the road. So we can go down here, and then here is the trailer, and again, if you need to sleep, you can always sleep here. Uh, if you go down behind the trailer and down, you'll end up going to the road up towards the ravine. We, however, are going to go left, go down this road here, and that should take us down towards the ice. It's not really a road as such, but it's kind of like a more like a path, really, as you can see. As you can see, the um, the ice and the road is right here. We can see where we're going to go. There is a misanthrope island right there, and the exit is behind it right there. So we're going to go straight across the ice. Straight across the ice. Here's a wolf in front of us. And remember, use the revolver to your advantage. And just scare them away with a gunshot. It will always work. And it will always, always work. 
So, uh, I lost track of him, but I know he's around here somewhere, so I can always shoot a shot just to make sure. And you can see, he ran off. I couldn't see exactly where he was, but he was around here somewhere, right? So I did that. And then we can take a shortcut down here if you want, just walk straight down. But if you still want to make sure that they are safe, you can just continue following the road as well. It doesn't make a difference. Wolfie is back. Let's get rid of him. He's not coming towards us even though it may look like it. And I keep an eye on him in case he gets too close. But he's fine now. Now we're getting to the um, burned down cabins. Look at how straight above. If you want to continue using the road, just go right here. Follow these roads down. I gotta admit, I very rarely use these roads <laughs> because when I play the long dark, I just go off roads and cross country and this and that. So it's very rare for me to actually go this route. But this is where the road is. So I'm just trying to take the most clean or vanilla approach as possible um, so that you can see where to go. So here's the road. And here's, uh, it will continue like this. But you can see where we are, right? So we're right here, right above the log sort. So we're very close to the water, and you can just run down. You can just run down on the right here if you want to, but if you really want to stay along the road, you can just follow this road all the way along if you want to. Really no problem. Yeah, I think I'm going to take a little detour. This continues all the way to the garage, but we're just here right by the road. Why don't we take a little detour right down to the ice here. And here's some wolves. A lot of wolves. We have the revolver, so they're really not an issue. And then here what I would do, so from here on on, you pretty much gotta go straight across the ice here, and it's really no problem whatsoever. However, remember that we have so many stims, we actually have seven left. If you have excess stims at this point, you might as well use them to get there faster. If you don't have any stims, just continue walking, and if you need to break, you can sleep in the Misanthrope Island right there, or you can sleep in the trailer right over there. So you have plenty of places to rest. However, if you have extra stims, you might as well just use them now so you can get there faster. So let's get rid of this wall first. All right, then we equip a stim, and then we first run, use our sprint, and then we wait for the sprint to expire, and then we use a stim. Not because we need to use it, but we have them, and when the challenge is over, Boom. We're not going to keep them, are we? So we might as well just use them now. <coughs> so we're going to use a stim or two just to get there faster. Here on this island here on the on the left, the Misanthrope Island, there can be a bear spawn uh, on the right there, on the left side. Uh, but he's not going to come over here, so we're not going to run into the bear. We can, however, equip the uh, distress pistol while we do this, if you want, just to make sure in case a wolf or something shows up. We still have six shells left, so we shouldn't have an issue with anything uh, from here on on. There might be another wolf on the ice there, so just keep going. If you don't have any stims at all, then just just walk uh, or run if you want and drink coffee. You can sleep in the house over there even if you want. You can sleep in this house up here. You can sleep wherever you want, really. But we have so many resources at our disposal. How many stims you find in this challenge is completely random, except for a few that are usually always there. So uh, you just use them as you see fit. You don't have to use any of them, of course. But this gets us there faster. That's something I would uh, recommend doing when you're near the end of the yeah, challenge. You might as well just use the resources you have, just because you have them, right? The rest of this challenge will be pretty much just me walking Desolation Point. But because I have all these um, um, these uh, stims, I might as well use them, right? Otherwise, why pick them up in the first place? And uh, that is pretty much how you do it here at the end. But you can take your time. We have all the time in the world. We got four days left still to do this. You can easily just stop and sleep. You can stop and sleep in the mine. And you can make your way here, you can sleep in a house here, you can sleep in the basement here in the next area. Do whatever you want, you know. If you do it the way I have been doing it in this walkthrough, 
you can see that you get to the summit around day two or three. And even if you got there on day four, you still have three days left to go here to the station point. And by then you should have so many resources, you have so much time, that there isn't really an issue whatsoever. So I'm just going to run through Crumbling Highway here. But in this particular area here, I will stop a little bit because here there is a little bit of a danger to be aware of. In this area here, there are two wolves, sometimes more. Oh, we got well fed, how about that? <laughs> and those wolves, uh, they patrol this area, and this is why the flare gun is really handy. Let's drink a coffee. Let's do get some energy back. <clears throat> These wolves could be anywhere. Sometimes they're out on the ice, sometimes they're in front, sometimes they're in the forest. And they can be a little bit scary. So I would just follow the road and have the flare gun ready. Just in case they show up. Or the revolver. See, here they are. And now, see, he's on me. However, he hasn't, he hasn't charged me yet. So I could just shoot a warning shot. And he will run away. Okay. However, if he was attacking me because I aimed down the sight, that will be a bit harder. So the revolver is good here, it works, but the, the stress pistol is better. Because if he suddenly got too close or I didn't react fast enough, then this works better. So again, just follow the road, uh, stay alert of the wolves. They ran down there now, so I don't think they're gonna follow me anymore. There might be one or two more wolves in Desolation Point, you gotta be careful of, so this is why Having the revolver is actually a little bit useful. It just makes it so much easier to deal with the wolves. But the stress pistol alone should be enough to keep you safe because you'll get um, you'll get is it eight shells. I, I used two just for fun now. Um, you get eight shells up in um, what was the seven? Well, whatever. You get a bunch of shells up in summit, and you can use them freely except for the last one. Here the road has collapsed, so you gotta go down here instead. You gotta go under this log here. And you gotta go back up. There we are. We're back on the road now in a sec. Or you can go down to the... Uh, uh, you can go through here if you like. The road collapsed and you can just go back up here. You know, whichever. Let's make a difference. Let's run to the mine set. some rabbits and now we get to the mines and the last place where we're gonna need some light and it's only noon so we got loads of time I might as well drink the coffee I have why not let's get there a bit faster so here we are uh, let's continue keeping this quiet and using this storm lantern <coughs> As there's two places here we need to crouch through, but we'll be perfectly safe. Let's do it like this. I think I need to lay down. Doing this challenge requires some map knowledge, so it's not the easiest of all challenges to do in terms of knowing the maps, but not nearly as challenging as some other ones like Aztec Sleep or Dark Walker. But for the most part, you only really need to know a little bit about Timberwolf Mountain. Timberwolf Mountain can be a little bit daunting if you don't know the layout. But just follow this video that I have made for you here, and you should be fine navigating up there. It really isn't that hard. So now we're just going to keep walking through this. We'll come out on this side in a sec. Oh. Loads of coal on here, so if you ever want to forge in Desolation Point, in the Riken boat that's there, you can grab all this coal when you head there because there's so much coal to be found in this mine. Plus the other mine that's in the station point itself. You can see coal everywhere. So if you need to forge and need coal, just come through here, go to the Riken and forge there. No problem. And here we are. Here we are at the station point. We're gonna say thank you to the Storm Lantern. You've been a great help. Have a great life. And keep the light burning. And there we are, so here you can see, there is our destination, the lighthouse, where we're going to go and fire a flare. And there's a shortcut you can use actually here to just get down. We're not going to do that, we're going to stick to the regular routes. So let's go. I'm going to run around here, follow the road, 
and there is a possibility of running into maybe two more wolves at this point so I would still recommend having either the revolver or the flare gun out you're not going to run into any bears after you leave Timberwolf Mountain unless you take a different route than the one I showed you you're only ever going to encounter probably just one bear and that's the bear that's after the rope in Timberwolf Mountain on the road in Pleasant Valley. There could be a bear in your way there, and you can use the flare gun for that. And then you shouldn't run into any bears. Here the bear is on the other side, so it won't be in your way. In uh, in Coastal Highway, the bear is on the east and west, so you probably won't run into it. If so, it'll be in their missing bro. And here it's not really anywhere, so you shouldn't run into any bears in this challenge. Uh, more at least not more than two I guess I would say so here we are so on this road here which now leads to the lighthouse you can get ambushed suddenly by a wolf they can come just suddenly from from the ice here or they can come suddenly from up here uh, they can also come around the corner uh, by the road where you need to go to the lighthouse so it now might seem like you're finally there you have reached your destination you have you, you, you're home safe right but there's still always another wolf right so just don't don't play it safe until you can uh, be alert that there could be a wolf coming just suddenly I once did a speed run for this and I ended up getting attacked by a wolf just right here sounds like they're on the ice though uh, but there could be one in front there also can I see the wolves no, but keep keep an eye out here because the wolves could come from right here, could come from here, could come straight ahead. We need to soon take a right, and very often there's a wolf in the way there. It's one of them, and he spotted me, and I'm gonna scare him off with this. And he runs away right away. You don't need to hit the wolf with the stress pistol to scare it off. You just need to shoot it goes for all the animals. Here also the wolf could come over this ridge here suddenly but once you're at this point here yeah, I'd say you're home free. You're not gonna have any struggle from this point onwards. So here we are. Here we are at the, the lighthouse. A beacon of light here in the long dark. It's a, it's a cool thing and a, a lot of people have this as their base as well. It's a very uh, fun destination. You don't have a workbench in here, I don't think, but you do have uh, a bed and uh, a stove. So it's a nice, it's a, it's a nice location, the, the lighthouse. And we got fatigue reduced, apparently. <laughs> but yeah, so here we are. We're going to go up to the lighthouse now, shoot a flare, signal that we want to be rescued, and then our journey will have come to an end. And as you can see, we still have a lot of resources left. We still have a bunch of ammunition. We have flares, we have stims, we have all sorts of things. So yeah, we're not going to run out of resources anytime soon. And it started snowing, it seems. So let's get inside. We have reached the lighthouse. And if you can't see, well, you can light a flare or you can just shoot one of these. And now it lights up the lighthouse. And now I can see where I'm going. <laughs> and there might even be another stim here. <laughs> Not that you need it. And go up these stairs and up, up, up we go. Up, up, up we go. Until finally we get up here to the stairs. We're going to go up. And here we launch our final flare. And in the uh, art for this challenge, you see Mackenzie standing and shooting up into the sky, which is kind of like the cool thing to do, right? But the challenge will actually complete regardless of how you do it. You can just shoot it straight ahead and on the I think you can even shoot on the floor if you want to, and you'll complete it. Before we do though, as you can see, we still have so many resources left. There's five stims that use two gold rings all this medicine i had very good gear but i get, stopped looting because i already had good enough so much food left and i even left some of it behind water even more coffee if we wanted it we had all of these tools we had a bunch of ammo that we never used either 
and everything else. So this is, you know, you're not going to struggle with resources here. Uh, so I hope that was useful. So we can finish a challenge. We can do it glamorously. You can shoot it up into the sky and soon, yay, done. Or you could be like, oh, I'm so exhausted. Oh, whoops. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, you there. Oh. <laughs> but there you go. Uh, that took three days. And I took it quite slowly. It didn't take a very long time to do. It was only really um, the end where I rushed a little bit. I ran a lot. I used a stim. And I just uh, tried to get a bit faster. But other than that, I took it quite slow. And as you saw, there's loads of time. You can easily rest. You can stop and sleep in Cinder Hills Mines, in in the Lookout Tower, in anywhere in Kuskosa Highway. You can sleep here in the mines. You sleep wherever you want. You have loads of time. So yeah, uh, just take it easy. Loot a lot in the beginning to get your clothing and warmth up. Get some resources and food, weapons if you can. And then head to the summit and take summit slowly and carefully. Once you're at the summit, use the shortcut down and then just get there in your own pace. And it won't take you very long to do either. As you can see, I've been able to do this in 13 hours. But today I took it much slower so you can see what's happening. So that was it. So that was Helpless Rescue. I hope that was useful. I hope you can manage the challenge yourself. And I hope you have fun and stay safe out there, survivors. i see you next time. Bye-bye.